Greetings and welcome guys, gals, and non-binary pals to episode 418 of the Words About Games podcast, the weekly gaming podcast for Words About Games. I'm one of your hosts, Amy Kate Alexander, and I'm joined this week by the sleepy one himself. It's a Mr. Daffin Moody. Hello everyone, it's Friday, you know what that means, it's go to sleep and have a long nap week, <laughs> weekend day, that's what it is, and video game day too as well, I hope everyone's had a great, a great week, I hope everyone had a great long bank holiday weekend as well, apart from don't, probably don't Amy, because I'm guessing Amy was working. Exactly. <laughs> you I son of a him bitch. regretting it as a sentence was coming out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're also joined by Vitz Patel. What's good, everybody? How, do, how are we all doing, gamers? Yeah, I'm know. tired. I'm uh, this I, I, I've, I've heard. Well, I'm ready. I'm ready to go to bed. With I went and see. We got a super fun podcast to do first. <laughs> if I fall asleep, just let it happen. <laughs> when... Movie content. That's the title. Movie the, fell asleep. <laughs> at the top of the show, let me remind you that uh, on Saturday uh, at 7 p.m. BST. Uh, we are doing our uh, third charity stream for the wonderful team over a special effect with Let's Play Halo Reach. Uh, you'll be sh you'll be wanting to join that stream for sure. Catch the intro because uh, it's a special one. And then the rest of the, sure stream, the, rest will the stream will be great because Moody will just yeah. be like, "This fucking sucks. Fuck this. Exactly. It's bullshit. This game sucks. I hate everything yeah. about it." <laughs> 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 Why is it uh, yeah, so Saturday the 31st <laughs> where you are in the world and if you got unable to catch that live then uh, the VOD will be available on Twitch and on the YouTube as well if you if you, uh, if you start bringing that sprint button malarkey back Moody I'm, I am going to bring this microphone to, to your house the next time I see you <laughs> specifically so I can beat you with it <laughs> it's on a stick <laughs> the stick is made of metal <laughs> it sure is <laughs> it's got a very sturdy base <laughs> 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 interesting <laughs> yeah there will be shenanigans on saturday and no doubt we'll be gonna get each other uh for i haven't played halo reach before and I, uh amy have you have right or no <laughs> yes <laughs> okay once or twice uh, yeah and then uh <laughs> so a amy will be our guide uh, trying to uh take us through oh no no no, no 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 i'm just gonna sit back and let you guys run run free Fair enough. That That's was the okay. strategy I employed when we did all the other Halo games for Moody. <laughs> there yeah, go, but then. there was one time you did have to take control because I got completely fucking lost. Yes. Because this is no marker of direction where to go in that one level. I don't know which Halo it was. I think it was one, it was one of the first two, three. Oh. Yeah, I completely got lost. And I was saying, Amy, take control. Just tell me where to go. It's the level where you're not supposed to know. It's the level where you're not supposed to know where you need to go. And admittedly, uh, it's not a very good level. Stupidly designed level. What a surprise for a Halo game. Oh, look <laughs> at me. I can't, hand, I can't manage unless I've got objective markers all over my screen. <laughs> to be honest, that, I remember I getting lost really do in consider Halo that an 1. insult. <laughs> That's <what> anyone <laughs> says that. No. But yeah, look forward to that, friends. Uh, yeah, me and me are going to fall out, probably. <laughs> probably, yeah. Who knows, your boy might activate and, and to be really good at Halo, but chances are he won't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm probably pretty good at it, I think. And I will not be. Mm -hmm. You're pretty good at Halo. You're decent. Oh, shucks. You don't have to lie for the listeners. I'm not lying. <laughs> I never lie. I never lie about your competency of video games. <laughs> and yet that sounds like a lie. <laughs> Well, that's on you. That's a you problem, not a me problem. Yeah, so I, I yeah, that, might true, that might be true. That might be true. That might be true. That's a you problem, Moody. You have to sort yourself out. Sorry, sorry, Moody. I can't really do anything about that. Well, I can't, I can't, I've seen it on many occasions, like even with my therapist. I've seen. I can't take. I can't take a compliment whatsoever. I'm just like, nah, that doesn't sound right. Go, uh, uh, no. <laughs> I just can't not take a compliment whatsoever. Oh, okay. Like Good. it's really hard to get compliments at work. Because <laughs> right. my boss is a, my boss just has stopped doing it now. <laughs> it's just like you don't take them very well. <laughs> I'm just like, that's fair. And I've just said, as long as I still have a job, 
That's all that matters, boss. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, good. Just, uh, just so, reverse well. psychology is out the play. Moody, you suck. <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. If I get told I'm su- I suck, then, yeah, that's a rabbit hole all in itself. <laughs> that's, not, that's not the way it motivates you. <laughs> no, it Suck, isn't. do it I? Really <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moody turns out he's the Kobayashi Maru all along. <laughs> Who sucks now, you filthy animal? <laughs> Maybe the only Happy person you killed was me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was far too old to realize that those scenes in Home Alone were shot for that movie. It wasn't yeah. just like some old film. <laughs> yeah, 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 I didn't realize that until I was a lot older as well. Oh, I really? Yeah. It, so okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be a sick movie. Yeah, all that, yeah. <laughs> I would have watched the shit out of that film. <laughs> I know, exactly. that's the thing about it. That film sounds awesome. Wait, that's, that's, it's fake? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I suddenly feel sad. <laughs> Why? But yeah. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Exactly. <laughs> and a happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> ah, great movies. <clears throat> mm-hmm. They are. It's coming up to that season, so I'll have to get prepped off. Just I them mean... Off. <laughs> I, I not did quite see, so, uh, at, at the at my local supermarket at least and i imagine they are up and down the country there are already stands and standees oh. up for christmas so i was in i was in town a day man and and one of the buses was coming towards the the bus station in town mm-hmm. and literally it must have been cycling trying to find the right the right like thing Oh, you right, know, yeah, like the sign on the, the front. The sign on the front, and it literally flashed up, Merry Christmas from Arifa yes. Bus. So it's like, what the fuck are you playing at, you motherfucker? It's August. It's 118 <laughs> days till Christmas It's day. summer. <laughs> <laughs> this is Avia's hard line in the sand. She should go no further. <laughs> Get <It's> Ben. <laughs> First time is like like I like I, I used to love Christmas when I was a kid and everything like that. But then like I started working in hospitality, and then like started working in hotels and everything. <laughs> and it was just like so we're gonna put our Christmas decks up literally at the beginning of November and Christmas songs basically at the beginning of November. And I was like, what's seven? Oh, oh, yeah so by the by, by not even halfway through november i'm already sick of it and i'm sick of christmas and everything but thankfully i'm kind i'm no longer in that i'm out of hospitality and everything like that so i'm like i, I, I don't mind christmas as much i still i'm still get i still have to get used to of the thing of like it starts people that basically started it really really soon and it's just getting longer and longer mm-hmm. it's earlier and earlier for people should I say and it's it's it is bonkers and whatnot sure. but uh no yeah so <laughs> Do you reckon a lot of that is down to the fact that when you think about it, there aren't that many Christmas bangers when it comes to music? There uh, aren't. In terms of the number no, of No, don't them. trust me. So you just hear the same songs over and over the and over. The two of us are probably experts in this in this field. Yeah, There are not very many good Christmas songs. <laughs> <laughs> in the grand well, scheme of things, like, yeah. if you have to sit there, right, and listen to a playlist of music for an entire day, which is, mm-hmm. you know, a long-ass time, as you and yeah, I both yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you're not yeah, going to yeah, fill yeah, that yeah. playlist with good songs <laughs> eventually true, yeah. it's just like stuff over does, and over and over is it again. upbeat does it have the word christmas in it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> basically yeah basically when the christmas songs are on it's basically you're that you're that you're you're that scene from the, i think it's the final season of how i met your mother where um i uh, can't remember his name uh marshall Mar- uh, marshall is marshall? it yeah. Marshall, he's in the car uh, with a with a teacher, I think, driving to go and see Lily and everything like that. And he just he's angry. He puts on the song 500 miles and <laughs> miles," <laughs> and, and he's just like, and she and she goes, oh, "I hate this song. Don't worry, Don't worry. you'll come around to it." Comes, it comes <laughs> around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. The episode. It yeah. is. It's true. You just uh-huh. go through the emotions with that one song alone, where you just like, da, 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 da. and then by the end, you're just like, "Oh, I hate this." fucking song and then you're just singing it again about an hour later it's it's terrible and that's what basically every sick christmas song is these days it's like faith it's is the like... heart <laughs> yeah. yes i love it now, I'm sick of it. now i love it again <laughs> yeah. yeah basically yeah yeah no it's it is insane no doubt about that absolute mm-hmm. bonkers it's a great oh, episode yeah. Not not the one you're you're thinking. The first one where they go on the the road trip. It's like season two or something, and 
It's the tape. Oh, yeah, stuck the, in the thing. The Fiero, yeah, has oh, a yeah. stuck tape deck. <laughs> yeah, so why is the same song all the time? Because they just stuck, got the, the the tape is stuck. But, yeah. but it follows them in the end when they have to put the car down, <laughs> which is just funny. I don't think I'll ever forgive that show for the way it ended. Uh, just in terms of the kind of the the last season and what they do with the the character that actually turns out to be his wife, kind of thing. Uh, the mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was what... a great concept for the last season with the whole like it takes place over the span of a long weekend, but like yeah. they biffed the land in. There's some great episodes in in the last season. Hundred um, percent. There's some good episodes. I don't th- for me. I don't think there's any real great episode. Um, it just because it by the end though it was just really it got really still for me. Because it's just like, this, oh my god, this is like 20 episodes of just one long fucking is, weekend. We've been going for nine seasons, guys. You're hitting all of the greatest hits again. <laughs> it's basically, see, it was a series, a, um, a, a season of 24, basically each hour of the fucking show leading up to I Do. And then by the end of the season, they broke the fuckers up. <laughs> Just so he can get back with her after the mother dies. Spoiler. But uh, yeah, I, I personally really didn't like the finale. It, like, I haven't touched How I Met Your Mother ever since the finale. I've never watched it again. And normally, if I like something, I do go back to it. Like, like, I, like, I, like I, I, I go back like sometimes and I rewatch Friends and everything. Because it's what I grew up with it. But I also I loved the land and I thought the finale was great. And everything. And um, this goes like with like Star Trek shows stargate star wars and everything like that it's just like for me it stars. Just, yeah a lot of stars <laughs> <laughs> and all other shows and everything like that she-ra i love she-ra she was one of my favorite shows but uh, uh, uh i can't remember the anime i what i really like but um there's a lot <laughs> there's something there must be, there's something to be said right for for like serialized the, a show that doesn't have like full-on serialization um, and I actually being a positive because like Star Trek Enterprise has probably hands down the worst series finale of all time. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't you don't need to worry about it. <laughs> you can just move the it whole on. show yeah. wasn't leading to this one thing, <laughs> so yeah. if it sucks, you just go, oh, well, it sucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, there's, there's watch no it again. doubt about it. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Like, and I did like like the like the last one of those last seasons episode on um, Strange New Worlds where. And they kind of gave honor to the Enterprise crew and everything, which was obviously I don't know it was the it was the Lower Decks episode, which was a great episode, and they gave honor the to the, yeah. the the crossover, which was a good episode. Was <clears throat> excuse me, which was a good episode, and like I get where people do like enjoy the Enterprise show and everything. I do. It's just yeah, it's it's kind of slow. But like, it's kind of slow <laughs> for me at the same time. Yeah. Um, I tried but all no, four it's... seasons. Fight me, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's also it's like it's even on top of like like say like um one of the I think one of the most divisive endings is the finale of Game of Thrones and everything. Again, I would defend oh. that. Apart from the who the crown is king, it still to this day makes no fucking sense. Who has a better oh. story? Literally every other character. Literally yeah, every yeah. other character has had a better story. You seeing the lines has a better story. Dinklage, shut up! Guy. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, um, that whole thing. Yeah, was just stupid and everything. But even I have not gone back to watch oh. any of the season at all. No, of not the, the dragon. I I haven't touched that. I was like, like oh, on, I. Had- I watched That's the first it. season of House of the Dragon and I thought it was amazing. There was some low parts uh, where I think it was a mix for a couple of people, or a couple of for fans and everything, but I think overall it was just a very fast-paced show that really just hit really hard on parts. Um, I haven't seen season two yet. I do know things that happen in it, but also I'm like, I'm hearing the mixed things of just like what was kind of like season two, I think, for Game of Thrones, where it's like, did they do anything okay. in this show? But counterpoint, <laughs> ignore all of that and just watch the damn thing. I think we've, we, yeah, we've learned that lesson think, on over and over again. If you think you enjoy it, don't listen to critics, because yeah. yeah. people are saying great things about uh, the new season of Lord of the Rings Rings of Power on Amazon, but I'm not touching that, because I'm just not in their headspace, and it, even oh, if I it... Will. I love Lord of yeah. the Rings. I'll always I, give it a look. Yeah, that's not how, I just haven't had time to get round to watching the second season of House of the Dragon or whatnot. It's right. just I've decided other things on my mind and whatnot. Then uh, my why, thing with, why I would prefer to watch. My thing with Game of Thrones was like the ending was terrible, um, but like for me, but like mm-hmm. I was mentally checked out from like season six onwards. I think yeah. with most of the show, yeah, I was yeah, like, I'm watching it. Out, I'm watching it out of a sense of obligation, not because I'm enjoying it anymore. Because I think it did just sort of. 
Like, and again, this is just for me. It did just sort of like, I don't know whether it was just I changed or the show like was getting worse in quality or whatever, what, whatever it was. To grow up yeah. Over I was time. just like, I was just like, I'm not <laughs> enjoying this much anymore. I'm literally, I'm watching it because I was, he's never going to finish the book. So I want to see how it ends. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so like it was bad. Like I, I found the last season bad. But I wasn't as invested, <laughs> so I wasn't like, "Oh man, I can't believe they ruined it." I was like, "Yeah, I mean, season seven was <laughs> was pretty pretty boring too." Like, eh, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't really dig season six. Basically, after Jon Snow gets killed, and then the seasons that fall out—I don't know when that was—but after that, yeah. I was just like, eh, "You know, it's not, it's not great." <laughs> like the, the eight seasons, if I remember rightly, so he was killed yeah. at the end of season. F- Five, Maybe. six, yeah. and then he comes. Yeah, and the, the end of season five. You get, I think, he kills the end of season five. Obviously, comes back. Season six, I think, arguably is overall lauded as arguably one of the best seasons for Game of Thrones because they do a lot I in that season. Season six. <laughs> <laughs> I won't lie, I might be misremembering. That might be in the order out of Rocky, yeah. for all I know. It's like, you know? Sending a conviction over me. <laughs> uh, but, like, I've just been rewatching um, Ted Lasso. Like, I really enjoyed Ted Lasso. It's such, oh, it's such great uh, remarks and everything in the show that are just so quotable. But mm. it's also just a lighthearted show Fuck. that I just really Damn enjoyed. Yeah. <laughs> Roy Kent is the greatest char- one of the greatest characters of all time. There's no doubt about it. Um, and I, I, I was stuck when I found out over the weekend that they're coming back for a season four. Yeah, what the hell? That, that was, I was like, that, that to me, the smells of like, even though I'm happy for it, I'm just like, Apple was like, yeah, we haven't got any shows that are rising our subscribers up here. We need to bring Which back a show. Which is nuts. It's so <laughs> nuts, man. Like that, 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 the fact that like Apple TV, like, and I'm not expecting it to hit Netflix on numbers or whatever. Like, mm. it's too late. But that's too, what they want. That's it's the too. Thing. It's too late to the party. Like any streaming service that started within the last five years that isn't called Disney is too late to the party at this point. Yes. <clears throat> but like, it's nuts. <clears throat> And it's a perfect indication that quality does not drive your subscriber base, <laughs> because Apple TV has a lot of great shit on it. Like, oh, like the the hit ratio on Apple TV is probably higher than it is on on most of the streaming platforms. Like, there's so many good mm-hmm. shows on that on that on that service, and no one subscribes to it. <laughs> no, hundred percent. It's Agreed. that thing of when, when you're dealing with <laughs> uh, like a platform like Netflix, which is a verb. <laughs> as well yeah <laughs> these days as well that like, your goose is kind of cooked at that point <laughs> yeah, exactly like you know netflix has got the 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 was the one that started it right yeah and you've got like mm-hmm. amazon just has all of the fucking brand deals right they got lord of the rings they've got yakuza mm-hmm. they got fallout um and then like they they deals and they, and they, <laughs> yeah disney is disney and then paramount yeah. has star trek so like you know if you like star trek you'll subscribe to paramount plus Hi. Mm-hmm. um and then like i don't understand the purpose of any of the other ones like I like ones yeah. like Mubi, I, I I subscribe to that every now and again, but that's for like my bougie films. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, Peterson with uh, starring Adam Driver, yeah, I'll watch that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a weird it's a weird thing right now. It's but sadly when it comes to it, it is sadly quality. It just isn't the, it. It should be the thing that everyone strives for and everything, but sadly, it just, just sometimes <clears> isn't the thing. Sometimes the most weakest show, quality-wise, can get the highest viewership and they get renewed. But sadly, the show... I'm going to bring it up from last week. The, the Acolyte, Acolyte's been going on. The backlash and all that, the whole demeanor and the whole... The left and right just clashing I, over this show is insane. I haven't seen Star Wars Acolyte. But yeah, when you wouldn't when, like it, I honestly do believe that. I don't when, think you when would Acolyte like. got can- when Acolyte got cancelled, um, be- because like it's been impossible to avoid all of the discourse about Acolyte, yeah, yeah, even yeah, yeah. even before it came out, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like me seeing Acolyte get cancelled, like to me justified my my decision to quit Star Wars after Rise of Skywalker. Because I was just like, there's no vision, there's no creative vision in Star Wars at all. They don't stick to their guns. They do whatever they think fans want, even though fans don't know what fans want. Friends which which is it. how Rise yeah. of the Sky which is rather the Rise of Skywalker happened in the first place. So the fact that they've done it again, like so many years later, I'm just like, you know what? <laughs> I'm so glad I just dipped. <laughs> I still stand by. I think you would love Ando. Probably. Yeah. That, probably and that's right. th- and that's got second season, I think, coming up. I don't know if it's this year or if it's going to be like the beginning of next year or anything like that but right. yeah that, that second season's coming 
Um, the other I do part think, of, like, go on, sorry, sorry, the other part of just no. not wanting to watch new TV shows is just because it's like you, we wait two years for three episodes to come out. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm not about that life, man. I'm a binge watcher. <laughs> two episodes for three, two years for three episodes. What's that show? It's an exaggeration. This? Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought I'm sure actually did that. But no, it's no, cool it's like doing that kind of. No, it's like, yeah, I guess like you wait for six months for another episode to come out. It was like, great, you know, thanks. Um, but no, like the whole like, oh, wait two years for a, a, a new season. Like, no, nah, good. <laughs> yeah. I don't, well, don't want to do that. Like, imagine if Game of Thrones released like that. <laughs> It'd be thirty they did, years they took before. A year off yeah, they, they took a year off for once for the last season, but before yeah. that, they were they were coming out with the with the TV the yearly. seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but now they are every two years. I'm gonna be fucking sixty by the time I finish watching the Strange New Worlds. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just not about That's that life, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I can believe that. That's understandable. Like, yeah, it's just well, obviously, like Strange New Worlds, the third season, yeah. We should have yes. come out this year, but obviously the writer strike stopped that. Yeah, of course. and obviously they pushed that till next year and everything. So, which is understandable. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's weird. It's uh, it's also st stupidity. I'm just getting sick of hearing it, but it is at the same time correct. The stupid show, the stupid companies that, that are throwing the stupid amount of money at these shows. It's just ridiculous. At the same time, I understand why the act like was cancelled. I do. Forget about the quality wise, just when you don't have when you don't get the viewership and you're throwing a your stupid amount of hundred and eighty million dollars into the show, which made no sense to me. Obi Wan was like eighty million. Why the hell and that's did too you... much money? <laughs> yeah, I agree with that, but, <laughs> hey, but you it's, it's, a, it's a lot more dip, it's a lot more <laughs> understandable. But um Yeah. It's a shame. Uh, I feel for the fans who are like screaming, who love the acolyte and everything like that. But like, you can scream all you want. Disney ain't gonna change their mind for you. This ain't Warner Brothers who are gonna release the Snyder Cut. Disney just gonna be like, "Fuck you! <laughs> it's our money. We're not doing it." <laughs> Warner Brothers would have cancelled acolyte before it even came out. Yeah, yeah. Sure. right enough. They would have filmed it, then cancelled yeah. it. Right off. That's my point. Because attacks like, right off. Yeah. I don't want to get like. Star Trek is Star Trek, and unfortunately, like, my dad got me into that when I was three years old, so, like, I've got, I've got no hope of, like, ever escaping the, the, you never the gravity of Star it, Trek. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, I did, yeah. When it was bad, when we went 15 years without, with, like, three movies yeah. that I didn't like, <laughs> well, two movies that I didn't like, and one that I did, um, but, like, the, like, you just, I can't deal with franchises, man, like, yeah. I anymore. get it. Like the the fans base that the the that just like scream bloody oh, murder about yeah. anything that changes. Like, but yeah. which you know, oh, you can ignore them. I mean, you can, but it seems like the people who are in charge of running these franchises aren't ignoring them. So you can't really ignore them. <laughs> yeah, all franchises seem to have a fan base with some amount of toxicity in them. I don't think there's a single one which doesn't. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> the, thing, the thing is and about it, people forgot how toxic when before Disney bought Lucasfilm. People forgot how toxic Star Wars fans were. Well, People yeah, because... kind of forgot. Did you not remember the fucking the only, prequels? The only got a, the only got a trilogy of films every twenty years. Like you didn't have to hear from them for a while. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now they're everywhere. Now they because it's constant, it's just like, like oh god. <laughs> I have to hear we about this. We know better. We know the law better than the people at Lucasfilm. I doubt you do. I bet Dave Floney, who had. I'm mixed on most of the time because I think he does great things sometimes, but he also does some bad writing. Um, uh, but it's like, yeah, I bet his knowledge compared to any freaking Star Wars fan out there is fucking bigger than his. It's small. Uh, his, his knowledge is far better than his. There is. There is. My words, I can't get it out. That's all why I'm tired. Mm. But um, yeah, it's fran franchises. I'm addicted to them, but I also hate them at the same time. It's the bo it's the most abusive relationship ever. <laughs> because like I love I do, I love Star Wars. It's like you Amy, when it comes to like Star Trek. Like even if it's a bad, I'll probably give it a go and everything and see how it is. And like for me, I'd argue say there's been more good than bad, but it's now getting close to where there's probably even so it's gonna be even maybe soon. <laughs> and I was like, oh no. <laughs> well, and, which is just crazy. <laughs> and the worst part is they'll never take a break to reset themselves. Oh, stop. They no, can't stop. Are. That's how you lose money. You can't stop anymore. Like you're not allowed. <laughs> the worst thing is they won't lose money. 
The merchandise alone. Oh saves no! I mean, them. if they stopped, they, like, if they if they stopped, they'd still make tons of money, but they wouldn't yeah, make yeah, as yeah, much yeah. money as they would and if they make always another has to Star Wars. Always and has then to another up. Star Wars. Yeah. Hey, yeah. let's yeah. let's just hey, let's bring back that one admiral guy that got choked in in the very first Star Wars. We'll make an entire series about him leading up to the moment he got choked by Darth Vader in the first ten minutes. <laughs> job this franchise wouldn't just a single. It wasn't just Star War. Do you <laughs> want to know? Go they'll never no. They'll never make anything original. In the Star Wars, in the Star Wars, <laughs> that's what the novels were for, and then they were like, "Nah, fuck those novels." <laughs> Do you want to know what happened to Grado before no. he got shot first? No, it's like he got... <laughs> it's like the fucking how Boba Fett became such a fucking icon of the Star Wars universe. I'll never know because I watched those films. I watched those first three films. He does He's fucking like useless. He's bollocks. <laughs> but the thing is, he gets Star killed Wars by a man who can't see, but on accident. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is the thing about it. The Star Wars fans are kind of on agreement with that. Before obviously the before he got brought back and everything like yeah we don't understand why everyone loves him but we do <laughs> and it's like that's the laziest argument ever but I'm gonna let it slide <laughs> whatever but well, yeah probably, it's like I it's mean, really uh, weird you know the the vocal portion of the Star Wars fandom probably liked that's him stupid. because he had a spaceship called Slave One. And on that note, video games. Video games. What about in video games? <laughs> oh, speaking of video games, before we get into the main topic here, I forgot to cancel <laughs> my boomerang order for Star Wars Outlaws because oh! I was uh, so I, I was gonna go oh, get I it didn't. in before and I'll get visions the, the visions of mana or whatever it's called instead. Uh, so I've got Star Wars oh, on the way. I'm probably gonna give it a try. Give it a so try. You know what? Let's give it. A Try. It's, it's Star Wars. Like, yeah, it's Star yeah. Wars. At least you didn't pay a hundred dollars only for Ubisoft to balk a patch and then have you uh have you really you a whole new trinket. Save file. <laughs> yeah, you can be like, you need to start again though. Like, are you fucking shitting me? Like I paid yeah. money to be able to play this game right now. You paid over the odds money as well. You what the fuck? <laughs> My question is like, are we surprised the Star Wars game went out and it is broken? I mean, <gasps> call on me surprised. It's a Jesus Ubisoft man. And Ubisoft things as well. It's a, I was going to say, I mean, it's a Ubisoft. Thing. Yeah, but EA have done the same thing. Respawn, the last their two Star Wars games were broken wait, wait messes. <laughs> the <laughs> Battlefront, the Battlefield games were broken messes. I'm, I'm <laughs> connecting some dots here. Yeah. What's, mm. I'm connecting some dots here. Similarities <laughs> between Ubisoft and EA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Like, I know we've got a homophobe uh, and his company doing a Star Wars game, which I am kind of interested in because it's just, I loved, I've i loved their games and everything. Which Star Wars um, The guys who did Heavy Rain, the team who did Heavy oh, Rain. Oh, God, I always forget well, that yeah. Star Wars game. Out. Don't, hmm? you, don't you worry. Star Wars Eclipse is never coming out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, wonder how many, I wonder how many <laughs> awkward, like, nudity scenes there are going to be in that Star mm. Wars game. Yeah, how many women are going to get beaten yeah. up in that? <laughs> Probably a lot. My fa- no, to be fair to David Cage, we'll make this a little Star Wars Outlaws thing. To be mm-hmm. fair to David Cage, no, he, we haven't played yet. He did <laughs> give me. That. He did give me one of the one of what I believe is one of the most hilarious moments of a video game, like like me playing video games I've, I've ever had, which is when I was playing Detroit Become Human, um, and I was here. I was with Tom. And we were playing it together. And you know, like, there's a moment, I don't know the game very well, I've only played it through once, <laughs> a long time ago, but like, when you're like, marching through the streets, and like, the the speech prompts come up, and it shows you like, the first like, part of the lie that you're gonna say, and I was like, one of them was, I have a dream, and I was like, he didn't, like, there's he no, he, there's no way, he's, no, and I pushed it, obvs. Of course, of course. <laughs> and then he that. said the line, and I was like, okay, but like, the next line's not gonna, and then like, the next line was and it's like you can just do the whole martin luther king speech and i'm just like you you why (laughs) just how i remember when he was like oh this game isn't about race no not at all (laughs) yeah and and there's the fucking like the bus with all the androids on the back (laughs) and i'm just like oh yeah this game's not about racism yeah sure yeah one of those those is called rose box for sure (laughs) (laughs) fucking fucking hell man (laughs) i just want to stay on my playthrough i made sure everybody was good (laughs) i don't remember uh, no, there was a moment where you had to do the riot, um, where the riot started, and you had to debate, yeah. like, you made, like, 15 choices, or something, you made a lot of choices to determine whether, like, it was, like, a, a, loads of damage or no damage, and I yeah, only yeah. made one choice, 
to to do you one to destroy bad thing. <laughs> no, all I did was I think I threw a bin at a window, like. And then all of the other choices were like, you know, no, let's like fucking calm down or whatever. And then in the news, they were like, these guys just fucking destroyed the entire city block. And I'm like, no, we didn't. I smashed <laughs> one window. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> talking about like I fucking firebombed the entire place. And I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. The only thing, I think the only doubt bad thing I did was I killed the security guard who was running away when we were going to do the, f uh, took over the uh, TV station. I don't know. And I think, I think I killed the, killed the film <laughs> the running away security guard. I saw him in the back. I'm sorry, but I needed time to get my, my truth out. <laughs> I liked them. Um, I liked the Android. The only thing I liked about that game, unironically liked about that game, was them, the Android who kept getting killed. And uh, Clancy Brown. There's a lot. <laughs> no, no, the main character guy. He played as in the demo when we went to Wii's UX. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'll he... stand by. That's arguably still one of the best demos. That was that was played. an amazing demo. That demo yeah. tricked me into thinking this game might be good. <laughs> <laughs> so it did, did its job. Because I, I didn't like David Cage games. <laughs> but I was like, damn, that was a fucking sick yeah, demo. I, um, yeah, I, I dropped off after Heavy Ray myself. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, no, I, uh, that guy and, and the character, the detective character that Clancy Brown, Brown plays, like those two were fucking great together. Like, I love their scenes together. Mm -hmm. I remember how it ended. Everybody was singing some fucking song and then they all got machine gunned. And I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I just didn't think it was good. <laughs> I had the, uh, the, um, oh, what was it? Uh, the nanny and the little girl and their protector. I got them through the border on Canada, into Canada for me. Uh, I don't but it I only got, I only was able to get through because I made sure that, um, the riot part or the shoot down part they weren't they weren't fighting and everything like that right. so it's like yeah, and they saw they stopped so the guy saw it sees it and he goes oh you can go for it <laughs> i was like uh, yes <laughs> i don't it's remember good. anything else about yeah. like any of my other i believe outcomes. that yeah. yeah yeah no i get that i remember doing the chase i remember doing the chase scene <laughs> <laughs> when you chase that guy for ages and then I fucked up oh, the, God, yeah. I fucked up right at the end and he got run over by a combine harvester and I was like laughing for about 10 minutes straight <laughs> the thing is he just comes back <laughs> yeah like, he yeah, does yeah it's just like oh he's I'm dead on, uh, oh he's dead again <laughs> yeah I actually like that part off. about it because I'm just like you can just kill him every time or you can if you get it right and you can just go through and his speed does changes does change a lot and i thought i was really i thought for me it was really i pissed off clancy brown good. and he shot him in the head i was like this is great like this is so yeah. dumb but it's <laughs> yeah. so good <laughs> and he just says oh man you're back <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I thought Clancy Brown was really good in that game. I thought he Clancy actually Brown gave, was, was, was he gave an emotional game. weight to it, yeah. especially with his backstory, with his character's backstory. I thought that was very good. Even though they completely forget about another story that's in the game, which actually you brought my attention for the first time, maybe I completely forgot myself about the Red Angel thing, I think it was. I can't remember. The religious part that was getting statues put in around at the beginning of the game. You can't remember it yourself, no. can you? <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I never noticed it. I completely forgot myself because it was just a completely non-thing. And then you brought it to my attention. Yeah, this part was just completely forgotten about, Moody. And I went, huh? When, when uh, I hit Red Alien, uh, Red, uh, Red, Red Angel, Angel. Even, uh, I was like, wait, we're talking uh, about I think Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. No. That's <laughs> uh, so my went. No, the, the, um, no, I don't remember. I, I remember finding it weird that, like, everybody got, like, <laughs> like iPads as newspapers and i was like so do they like come around and collect those or are we just like posting ipads through the door people's doors every day what's happening here <laughs> damn <laughs> apple really do ruin the world that's it but yeah no was, um, i enjoyed the game in the same way that i enjoy like plan nine from outer space right it's like it's not very good mm. like but like in that in that unique way <laughs> That makes it very enjoyable to to play. There's some fun to be had. Yeah, here, there's sure. fun. There's fun to be had here. It's not like Umbrella Corps, which I'll be streaming as part of our ten hour charity stream. Like, there's no fun to be had with Umbrella Corps. It's just bad all the way down. It's just misery. All like, around. I'd love to play like Quantic Dream games in that way. It's just a shame their studio sucks so bad. Mm. Uh, for for those who are unaware of uh, why we're <laughs> Are we so down on uh, on the studio? So uh, one of the many things uh, David Cage, the the head uh, honcho there, has done, has remarked that uh, all women are whores. 
Uh, and he also said, uh, you know, please, please judge me on, you know, the content of our games, not all, all what well, I, I was say. Like, I could have figured out David uh, Cage thinks that by playing all of his games. Exactly. And you know, for some cause... reason, I've played all of his games. <laughs> I truly believe because of his remarks, because I, I obviously I have no facts on this or anything like that. Just, it's just a good, I wouldn't have been surprised that PlayStation were going to buy them. And I think because of his comments, they just went, nope. nope. <laughs> we're going to step yeah. back. And that's why they don't do exclusives to PlayStation anymore and whatnot. Yeah, and the, because the, they're just like, the, we're the not, games, yeah, we're good. <laughs> the games seem to have a, a lineage of violence towards women and, and speak all acts uh, towards oh women. Oh my well, God. So, yeah. No, no, yeah. no, really. Like, even going all the way back to like Fahrenheit, which I remember mm -hmm. um, from back in way back when, uh, which his games seem to have this, this thing where it's like they have one great idea. And you play a level either at the beginning or near the beginning. And it's like, wow, this game is going to be amazing. And then it's like, it's just that same thing over and over again, but with diminishing returns every time. And then, yeah. whoops, here's some domestic violence. Whoop, here's some racism. And it's like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Damn, well, you know, the first level was fun. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just trying desperately not to let the android lady get domestic violenced. Yeah. Um, cool. Glad this has made, made the cut. But then Clancy Brown came back on the screen and I was like, everything was fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So that was fun. We, we had a little damn yeah. cage segue as we do on this podcast. At least it was game related. <laughs> it was. This, this time, this diatribe indeed was game related. <laughs> but yeah, Star Wars Eclipse. Oh my God, I can't believe that. That's just a that Star Wars Eclipse is just it, correct me if I'm wrong. It's just a JPEG at the moment, right? Yes. Yeah, it's just a, a logo. <laughs> That's it. Cool. A logo treatment, absolutely. Yeah. And fine. Anyway, why does the world need a PS5 Pro? It's a very interesting question. Because <laughs> <laughs> really? like we've been talking about it for a while like it's an inevitability and i know why play see i reworded this question really because i was you know it was like why are we making a ps5 pro because playstation want money from gullible fools who will buy it why does Hello. the world need a playstation 5 pro <laughs> fits don't be part of the problem man <laughs> I, I i will try not to like so for for context there are uh there's several rumors going around of I mean, uh, the imminent i mean <laughs> rumors yeah that's that substantiated uh, you know, vibes going around that uh, uh, PlayStation will uh, reveal details of a PlayStation 5 Pro system in early September. Uh, those renderings going around today and to avoid <laughs> copyright and legal ramifications, artist renderings of uh, the design that this all have been floating around at the time of recording. And oh, the uh, ones people have been reposting saying, look, it's the PS5 Pro. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, of course, this will have more bells and whistles, and uh, there were leaked specs a, a while ago. But uh, as we we don't tend to on this podcast report on like rumors and speculation and things like that. Uh, but yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting question of in a era of gaming where we are just getting diminishing returns from each system iteration. Why is there a need for one? Because uh, for the most part. Uh, at least on the PlayStation side, like most of the games have come out cross-gen. So that is to say they're available on PS4 and PS5 as well. And very few uh, titles are uh, exclusive PS5 or maximizing kind of the use case and the uh, and the bandwidth that the system has to have, to my mind anyway. But then even, uh, sure even that... like going further than that, it's like, yeah, sure, there's not that many PS5 exclusive games. So there's not that many games that are taking advantage of the, the PS5 yeah. that we currently have. You know, the PS5 we have at all. Mm -hmm um but like they're not even using the features like yeah the dual sense <laughs> thing right remember when astro bot no astro's playroom came up mm -hmm. and it was amazing and i was sitting here on a podcast with really going moody i want to give this controller game of the year like yeah. fuck all the games that came out this controller gets game of the year and then since then w what's happened like you play horizon and ooh, the bow yeah, feels the harder the, next week. The, the bow feels <laughs> like ooh, when you pull the trigger yeah. and ooh, in death loop when you, you your trigger locks when you don't have ammo on your guns and i'm like okay like 
next generation, baby. Yeah. <laughs> like, but no one's taking advantage of, of anything. Like, Rift Apart, mm-hmm. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which would have exploded on a PS4. Like, mm-hmm. because of the portal mechanic, where it's like, it's finally taking advantage of the fact that the console has an SSD in it. And it's like, well, what other game has done that? Like, games, games now come out suggesting you play on something that has an SSD, but that's just because otherwise the load times would be Bloodborne 1.0 left. Yeah, they would be intolerable. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like sitting at a load screen for like five minutes. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. Bad. And then on top of all of that, just to like really dive in on like why I'm asking this question, it's like the price of the base console is already too high. So this thing's going to cost more money. In and in some countries, <laughs> they've put the price up. <laughs> Like the whole point of a mid generation console release used to be the base model would get cheaper. So yeah. then people who couldn't afford the base model would jump in, and then people who wanted to buy the, the upgraded kit would buy the upgraded kit. Yeah. So I think for a lot of it, a PS5 Pro is marketed towards those people who have this like FOMO and need to have the latest and greatest, which is fine. That if, if, if that's what you, you do, then uh, that, that's all good. No, uh, it's not fine. I, if that's what you do, you've got more money than sense. Invest it in something else. Your PS5 is, is going to be able to run all the games that come out over the next four years of this console, three years of this console generation. <laughs> Perfectly uh, fine. Uh, what, what so gonna... many games with the six hundred pound this console is going to cost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I was going to say is that uh, I can only speak to, to my own personal use case of whatever bells and whistles a PS Five Pro might come with. Is I'm more than likely going to have to get a new television, a TV, in order to take advantage of it. So whether it will be higher frame rate, set four K resolution, or whatever it happens to be, kind of thing. Okay, and all, all of those are just words until a game actually utilizes those features. Uh, as Amy was pointing out earlier, kind of thing, in terms of well, it's all very well having these bells and whistles, but if only Team Asobi is using them when it comes to Astro Bot titles, then what's the bloody point? Uh, so it's one of these where it's not, it's no longer just like a 600 pound, uh, you know, a, a allegedly 600 pound uh, outlay. It's going to be for me, in order to use those bells and whistles, I've got to buy a new TV, uh, potentially, and all the rest of it. So it does get exponentially more expensive, and it's it's a similar way to the PS Portal. So I think that retailed for 200 here when that first came out. Moody would probably and, know. And, How much did you pay the, for your PS PlayStation Portal? Uh, 200 Yeah. And then the whole rationale was, oh, if you want to use uh, Bluetooth headphones, well, you can't do that, but we'll sell you these headphones for (laughs) another 200 quid. (laughs) We will sell you. And so then that outlay became like, if you want to do it with headphones that aren't wired in through the three and a half millimeter jack. That's Which nobody buys anymore now. because they took the stupid jack out of all of our phones. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So that, then that becomes a 400 pound out there. Uh, so it's one of these where you've got to, you got to look at holistically. And of course you can offset that by the cost of trading your existing system in and things like that. But it's still, uh, it's still going to be a lot. And as you say, like times are tough. People have no money, especially in this country, this economy and economies all around the world and stuff. And, they're going to need to come up with a heck of a, a, a reason for me to upgrade. And chances are I won't do it this year. Uh, of course, me being me and the sucker that I am, if Gran Turismo was like, oh, we've got a whole new updated, oh uh, new and improved Gran Turismo 7 PS5 Pro, I'm no. there day one, baby. No, but aside from that... no, I'm sorry. I'm drawing the line on the madness fits. No, because that game does nothing but disappoint you. And all it'll do on a PS5 this... Pro is it's going to disappoint you at a higher frame rate. Amy, I've had enough of you and your facts. Okay. <laughs> You've been playing other racing games and I assume enjoying <laughs> Remember yes, that. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but uh, it, it's one of these. We don't, nobody needs a PS5 Pro in the same way that uh, many people don't need a PlayStation 5 because their PS4 Pro is doing the business for them. Uh, but it's that sense of, they didn't, I know anecdotally we hear reports of how many systems have sold and whatnot and the numbers are really good because numbers always have to go up and stuff but anecdotally i still get the vibe that there's not too many ps5 systems out there in the wild so it's kind of they could have potentially kicked this decision down a couple of years uh and then come out with a uh with a pro system but it's it's still going to be diminishing returns as, as we we speak about so it'll be interesting tagging him moody Go. Mm-hmm. Tell me why 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 the world needs a PS5 Pro. <laughs> we don't. But yeah. 
done. Conversation right, cool. finished. We're done. Right, we're done. No, we're done. We didn't, the thing is about it, like we didn't need the PS4 Pro or anything like that. Um, it's just a, it's a thing that companies do. Microsoft have done the same, even though it's not a Pro version that they've re-released, but they've re-released their console in new versions of it with higher terabytes or without the disk drives and everything so, like that. That's what they've done. That's what all companies do. It's like it. Uh, you either get on board with it or you don't get it. You either buy it or you don't want to buy it. Like I say, it's, not, it's up to you with, and everything like that. When, when it goes fit, sorry. Sorry, I think with that example, I think most after the systems are releasing, and correct me if I'm wrong, the only difference is, yes, they're taking out the, the disk drive on some units and that's just increase the storage. So the actual internals yeah, yeah, yeah. are the yeah. same, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I said, yeah. They haven't changed yeah, so anything the, like that, yeah. yeah. They haven't become powerful or anything like that. But rumors they're going to do a, a more powerful version in by 2026 and everything, for all we know. But who knows? Like, rumors galore out these, these days. Let's see what Jeff Gubb says next Great. week. That'll be, that'll, <laughs> that'll be, so the, the anchor around the neck of the Xbox Series S is going to get even heavier if they do that. Good. <laughs> um, why do we need this? Like I said, we don't. It's like, if it's... The, the, no offense, we don't really need the PS5. PS4 will play the PS5 Ratchet games. Ratchet was great, but... Yeah. <laughs> Ratchet probably couldn't play it, but yeah, we, know, we couldn't really be able to play on the PS4, but it's just we're getting now to the to the era of now where it's just like PS, the consoles are not just consoles anymore. They're basically like phones, and that's basically what it is. It's just this is the, quote-unquote, the large version of the ps5 <laughs> the super bigger. version <laughs> basically um the xl version of the ps5 but type of thing and yeah that's just how it was like they re they re-released they, they, they put out a, they put out a slim version of the ps5 last year why did yeah. they do that because they did it uh, because they always do it all all manufacturers do that and it's the same thing this year they're just doing it and they're gonna go out it's more the powerful they, oh, it's more of this it's may, more of that go on the reason they did do the slim is that it's cheaper for them to make therefore the profit margin is bigger and that's cool and, and, like, and yet they've raised the fucking price for it at the same time so it like, doesn't, doesn't it make a fucking difference <laughs> like the releasing like slim versions of consoles like it's the same console it's just slimmer you mm -hmm. know like them raising the price is, is where i would draw the line obviously it's like yeah. the same fucking box mate like what you're talking about but like <laughs> special edition consoles where it's like remember when we had like yeah. a million different playstation 4s um mm -hmm. including that um anniversary one the 25th anniversary one that I never managed to get even though i really wanted one um is that the blue one or the no the gray one the gray one oh, the oh, i needed that i needed that in my life and i never got one but mm -hmm. um but like yeah that's XC, cool XC, like XC, whatever that's just an option right it's like if you really like halo you can buy the halo xbox you know like yeah. mm -hmm. Like that's fine. It's like, but it's like oh, we're gonna you can bring out me and just not like Halo, and not like Halo, and buy that. Like do you do you hate Halo? Do you want to be reminded <laughs> yeah. of that hatred every day of your life? Buy a Halo <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go to therapy. But if you don't want to go to therapy, buy an Xbox. But like, it's the it's these these like it's the formal that you talk about. But it's these like upgrades because like, let's be real here, it's still a PS Five. So. Yes. It's still got to run all of the games that the PS5 can run and probably all of the games that the PS4 can run <laughs> because, mm -hmm. like, you know, most games come out on PS4 and PS5 still, which is wild. Like, we're so far into the console generation and we haven't made that. By now, usually it's like yeah. nothing comes out. FIFA comes out on, <laughs> on the previous generation just consoles and Just yeah. Dance comes <laughs> out and then that's it. But, like... Yeah, it's just like we, we like it's just ridiculous on the face of it. It's like the games aren't going to get any better. What's going to happen is Ubisoft are going to release their next big open world game tuned to the PS5 Pro and break it. Yes, <laughs> on that no, console. That's, that's that's what they always do. We always talk about these games coming out on more powerful hardware, and it's like, ooh, maybe these consoles will finally be able to run them. But no, they just overtune them for those consoles, mm -hmm. and the cycle continues. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, that's a, that's the same with most third party uh, publishers and, and and the like. Is it all needs to be built for the lowest common denominator and then scaled upwards? Because largely, these machines, whether it be on Xbox or PlayStation, they are PCs at the end of the day, and it's tweaking the settings in the in the back end uh, is uh, how they are producing their PS5 Pro SKU and what what have you. So uh, and they yeah, would it, still argue that they're cheaper, pretty much, than a PC. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm not, yeah. yeah, this is an argument no. of uh, yeah, yeah. buy one over a PC or vice yeah. versa kind of thing. I'm just saying this is the 
in the land of diminishing returns, that they're, they're not building a ground up version just for PS5 Pro. They're going to mm-hmm. take the PS5 SKU and then see what they can tune sure. up to, to Amy's point. But yeah. like, we're at a point now where it's like, I'm expecting this. And again, I don't know. I don't have any inside information. I'm expecting this PS5 Pro to be six hundred pounds, give or take. Looking oh, at yeah. looking at the price of the PS5 base model, unless they drop the price of that that model like significantly, I'm looking at six hundred quid. Now, before in the before times, I would have said <laughs> even if you pick up the one x the ps4 pro the whatever like it's still cheaper to be a console gamer if you're on one console and you're only like following this path on one platform than to be a pc yeah. gamer but now it's like mate the graphics card you could get for 600 quid <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone's releasing their games apart from nintendo everyone's releasing their fucking games on this on pc now be a PC gamer. It's way better. And it's starting and to become to cheaper. <laughs> and it's starting to become cheaper. <laughs> like, I was with Mooney when he bought his new graphics card. I saw how much he paid mm-hmm. for it. <laughs> By accident. Under because three, we, under forgot to use, quid. we forgot to use the discount code. But it was still yeah. cheaper. <laughs> uh, to your point uh, of it being, uh, you know, uh, the approximation is going to be around £600. The uh, quote-unquote information that was uh uh, out today was that this uh, PS5 Pro SKU will not come with a disk drive to begin with. So the rationale is that the current disk drive that you can get for your PS5 Slim <laughs> uh, will also be compatible with this machine too. So it's most likely to be in a £650 system if you're, if you're going to have to buy a disk drive as well. <laughs> so it gets even better. <laughs> PC game. Well, yeah, I, I kind of, PC like, I, I'm not surprised that it's going to be, uh, if it's going to be digital. 100%. That, that's yeah, so, that's I, the way that's going to happen. That's the way PlayStation wants it yeah. because then people have really to buy through their it. ecosystem. A, yeah. yeah, because they get, they like, remember the, the old, again, the before time, the olden times, when one of the main argument for, hey, if everything goes digital, they'll drop the price of the games because they don't what? have to make discs and boxes and the fucking games are more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's more expensive to buy a game on the PlayStation Store than it is to buy it from fucking Amazon. You've I all been duped. <laughs> In the olden times, there were all the suits are sitting around a desk saying, okay, how do we feel about £70 a game? <laughs> like, fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> And we're going to be going back to the seventy pound game eventually when the next console cycle. Oh, comes it'll around. be eighty. Like when PS Six yeah. and, and oh, Xbox yeah. come out, we'll be lucky if it stays at eighty. And it's just like at a certain point, man. Right, we're going to talk about games later. Fitz is going to make sure we do because we forgot last week. And like uh-huh. I've been playing a game called Arco. That game cost me fifteen ninety nine, and I'm having a way better time with it than games that cost like triple that price that I've played this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And I'm just like, know? you know what? Maybe I just don't want to. Like, I mean, I just don't want to spend 70 quid on a game anymore. <laughs> like, even like Dragon Infinite Wealth, a game I loved and knew I was going to love. I was sitting on that store page looking at it. I think I don't think it was 70. I think it was 65. Um, mm. And I was, but like... Which is still boom, expensive. Which is expensive, <laughs> still expensive. It's a five pound yeah, difference. Yeah. But like, I was sitting there thinking, like, do I actually buy this? <laughs> like, am I going to yeah. buy this? Like, that's a lot of fucking money. <laughs> like, that's a yeah. lot of games as well. You can get. And I'm that. talking about that's a game a, yeah. I think is one of my games of the year. Easy, hands down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I'm thinking like Animal Well cost me like fifteen quid, and it's one of my favorite games like of the last ten years. And mm. it's like, like at a certain point, I th- at a certain point, more and more people are going to reach that tipping point, especially if the price of the games goes up without the price without people's wages going up too much that yeah. like concord just came out and it's a budget title and people yep. aren't buying it and i think one of the reasons people aren't buying it is because they don't that that initial cost is just people are looking at, at the game and just going i don't want this i don't think it's going to be worth this much but we're getting to a point now where people like me are looking at games they know they're gonna love <laughs> and be like oh i don't know chief <laughs> that's it and i think for for a lot of us uh at least if speaking for myself, why I may purchase a game at full retail. I'm often trading that, that in when it's done, so I'm recouping some of that cost as well. So I think it's rare that we are spending the full seventy pounds on that. And uh Yeah, there's that yeah, too. it'll be it'll be fewer and fewer instances going forward when we do that. So uh yeah, if if I do end up getting a PS5 Pro, not this year, next year or whatever it happens to be kind of thing, I will be buying a disc because that is still the rumors. cheapest way to 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 do it. But yeah. You're getting a but switch the, the too one next channel, year. This is true. But my one shining light is, Amy, that for all my 
for all my hopes and dreams that uh, Polyphony Digital are going to do something special with Gran Turismo, nothing <laughs> in the past three years has kind of <laughs> made, made me suggest that they are going to actually do something. So they're probably going to be fine. And they're not going to make any new oh. shiny bells and whistles for it. So we're going to be all good. <laughs> you're surrounded. You like, you're, you're like, it's not like the old days. You're surrounded by people on this podcast who love you and will stop oh. you from making terrible decisions about Gran Turismo. <laughs> like, we got you off that game, didn't we? <laughs> uh, Mostly. Sure. Yeah, we we go, got you go playing other games. Let's just, let's just put it that. That's let's leave it at that. The thing about moving from, like, the physical to the digital, because, like, obviously the argument is companies are reporting, like, big AAA publishing studios are reporting the like, 80-20 splits, 70-30 splits. Mm -hmm. And it's like, even at the 80-20, it's like, but we're not talking about, like, one game that sold a couple of million units. We're talking about like Sony. And I don't yeah. know what the number is. I'm just going to say, let's say it is 80, PlayStation, like uh, throughout an entire- uh, 70, 30, I think. Throughout an entire fiscal year, their, their split between physical and digital becomes 80, 20. 20% 20 of a hundred million. <laughs> That's a lot of millions. <laughs> is 20 million units sold. <laughs> And I don't think a lot of people, like, I don't think every single one of those 20 million make, would make the jump to buying digital. Mm. So even at those, even at those massive, like, even with that massive delta, like, there's still a lot of money being left on the table. Like, I think even if you get a 90-10, you'd still be thinking, mm, maybe for, like, a lot of our main games, we should still be putting out a physical edition. 100%. And then that's why that's why they sell, uh, sell a, a disk drive sold separately, <laughs> which is another 50 quid they gain in their back pocket. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing that I would buy, OBS. <laughs> yeah, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, obviously it's £50 out there, but it's still the cheapest way to, to play PlayStation. Hey, I can still play Forza Horizon 1. <laughs> Unlike a lot of other people. <laughs> that's true. Now I've got an Xbox yeah. 360 to do it with that I may or may not have stolen from Keith. <laughs> Very disappointed, by the way, that you didn't back me up when I said I didn't steal your Xbox, Keith. Because <laughs> <laughs> he knew. He knew. Because you know the he answer. You could, you could clear my name. <laughs> He's too busy looking around thinking, what else did you steal? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> do I still have this? that Sega Saturn? <laughs> <laughs> Amy, you just released a video about a Sega Saturn game. How did you manage that? Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> CX is real good this time of year. Yeah. Yeah. You would believe the video like that. Yeah, CX, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. my local CX had a Sega Saturn, and I was staring at it in the window like that. While you were looking <laughs> when at I was, Crisis. When I was failing to purchase Dino Crisis. I didn't tell my story at the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> If I get debated, you have to get back to that. <laughs> uh, I will, I, luckily, there will be there will be the perfect opportunity <laughs> to return time, to that yeah. story later. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, it's there's no doubt about like the whole like the economy, the economy, and like the situation for people's wages and everything like that. Obviously, makes it just makes us in our heads just scream and say, "Why the hell are you doing this?" Like. The oh. common person can't really buy this. It's not, they just don't have to be able to do this right now. Like, we're well, freaking things are going to get even more worse in the coming months, uh, winter, and everything. And you're going to be releasing this, I'm guessing, this year in November. I'm going to take a swag yeah. guess at then. And, and you're expecting people to throw out about 600 quid into a console. Um, and I'm not even saying go to like, I'm not even saying like try and get it on like finance or anything like that. Don't even do that because that's going to potentially could hurt you, especially if you can't it, pay man. it off and whatnot. It's not going to be worth it. Like, I won't lie. I openly admit and that, um, I was intending to get one, but I am I'm financially okay to be able to potentially do this if I wanted to. But even now I'm just like, I don't fucking be bothered <laughs> or anything. So it's like, uh, because my pay boy, right now I'm not really using my PS5. So it's like, it would be literally a waste of a purchase for me oh, right now. <laughs> I'm going for right now. I'm on my DS, my my Game Boy and flicking through my Switch sometimes and it's just insane as of how much of the like new games I'm not really playing anymore I and just on that point I opened mm -hmm. my um I opened my my PlayStation app because I don't I go on when I get notifications on the app on the phone because it's yeah, like yeah. hey these games you've wishlisted are on sale and I'm like all right let me have a look and like my last three games played <laughs> Bloodborne which I played a few uh, a month ago, I think. 
um, yeah. for for reasons. Uh, Alone in the Dark. Remember when I played that? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the the game before that was Crow Country. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> when I platinum Squirrel World. Country, which I think was nice. in like May, um, and yeah, my total so, yeah. time played on those last two games is seven hours apiece. <laughs> yeah. So like since That's May, insane. I've probably put like more time into watching DVDs on my PS5 than I have into actually playing games. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Would it be better Let's... if you're not using your PS5 at the moment before everybody decides to trade theirs in to get this new PS5 Pro to get uh, potentially 280 pounds for it? At your local CEX. Or oh, is that cash or install credit? Uh, that's a trading match. You get well, 232 in cash. That wouldn't help him okay. buy a PS5 Pro. <laughs> no, but if he's not using it, and the because everybody's <laughs> going to be trading their PS5s in, well, not I say everybody, people will be trading theirs in to get a PS5 Pro, then obviously the supply goes up, so the demand goes down, and the, and the value goes down, that kind of thing. So the worst thing is it when might it comes be to... better to do it now. I get where you're coming from, there's no doubt about it. And, like, if I do decide to, like, go for the PS5 Pro, my aim will be is to trade it in and everything and get yeah. probably cash and then go out and buy buy one. If they like, like, But I won't be buying the PS5 Pro from CEX yeah. because I don't trust them to have it as a good value yeah, because how they put that when the PS5 came out, they were absolute disgusting assholes they when it came it to their grand. valuations to it. <laughs> yeah. oh, I won't I trust them. I past that window. I was going to the cinema, wasn't I? And I posted yeah. those pictures. <laughs> I was like, yeah. fuck, it's fucking bullshit. It's like, like six, seven hundred quid they added that and it was oh. just disgusting. Justin. I was going somewhere. I was thinking, no, that yeah. was 2020. I definitely wasn't going to the cinema. Yeah, like for a long time, <laughs> for a long time, because of how they were with that, and their argument was just need the market value. You know, the market value is the market is what PlayStation said it at you, fucking muppets. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, all I'm saying is, you could get 232 pounds from cash now, or it might go down, or it might go up. No, uh, but like game or someone launch. will be yeah. doing a, a trading thing. Like mo most places game will be like. Oh, yeah. Game Mo don't accept trade-ins anymore. Most places will be like, trade your old console and get a new console like for yeah. X amount off. Um, but no, like to close this... to Sports Direct in order to do that. I don't want to do that. Every com <laughs> I've got bad news for you about every company. <laughs> 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 um, but the, to, to close this section out before we move into halftime, the the thing that I'm, I'm reminded of when I see like, you know, PS5 Pro, you know, Xbox Series Z, the... Is like is that thing we talked about Jim Ryan saying a while ago, um, where we roasted him for saying that the video game industry is recession proof. <laughs> it's like okay, if you say so. It's well, also what a time while for Jim Ryan to just be uh, cash. <laughs> I think you're about to find out that. how recession proof it is <laughs> if you try and release console because like they bring out this console at six hundred quid, um, like what is this? indicate for the ps6 and what like are we about to are we are we about to see another ps5 ps3 moment <laughs> where they're like oh, you're right, they like get two jobs they pitch yeah they pitch the <laughs> they're gonna pitch the ps6 to be like way too expensive and when people are like it's way too expensive are we gonna hit another well you just need to get two jobs moment <laughs> hey but if the they bring so, Kazurai think... back out to say ridge racer one more time then ridge it'd be worth racer. it <laughs> yeah for you the thing is i think <laughs> Xbox are going to do the same thing. They're going to put it, but their Xbox at the end of the day don't really care about their console sales and whatnot uh, compared to what they what they obviously change into. Yeah, um, if the Xbox, I say, if the Xbox is selling badly, it doesn't hmm. really matter that much to Microsoft. But if the PlayStation yeah. sells badly, um, Sony's going to feel matter, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about that. Sony's only money makers. <laughs> yeah. Um, when it comes to like, like I'm very good. I'm like kind of step on top of it a little bit but i'm very interested to see what the price of the next nintendo is going to be mm. like the switch was 300 quid i think the next one's going to be 400 well if you've got playstation releasing 600 pound consoles like i think 400 is probably like, bad. Four, yeah 400 is not going <laughs> yeah, to that no bad about it. there's no doubt about it but at the same the time but this is going to be a a quote-unquote rumors of it like is a power of the PlayStation 4. The PlayStation 4 you can get for like under 300 quid, 200 quid now, man. Sure. It's just like, yeah, people but what people would want to, you would have to, the only thing they can justify is obviously with their great games, in which they can back that up for the most majority, for the most of the time, unless it's a Game Freak game and they just release it broken and don't upgrade. Well, up, up to be fair though, the game was still, you know, really good. <laughs> it, to be fair, yeah, I did to start. Be fair. Uh, when you get down to the five frames at the end of the game, you told me, Amy. <laughs> I'm about to restart Link's Awakening. 
Again, Ocarina <laughs> of Time ran at 20 frames a second on Nintendo 64 and is considered a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like we'll we'll probably circle back to that when we find out the Switch 2's price. Um, but like, we're not Jack Grubb, end of September or sometime in September, well, so I've we all know how reliable he is. That's the second time you said his name, <laughs> and I've already warned you about this. <laughs> yeah, we have a Jeff policy on this show. We have a no Jeff <laughs> policy on this show. No Jeff Grubbs, Wait. no Jeff Keelys. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's like Jeff, you're an ad one, but that's it. <laughs> we we just, have one, Homer. <laughs> yeah, this is the no Jeff's club. <laughs> um, okay. You didn't, Rope. you didn't, no, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> right, let's do it. We'll, let's body roll into a halftime. We'll do the indie game of the week after the halftime break. Body oh, roll God. into a halftime. Body roll. <laughs> yeah, I want, that's what I want you to do right now. Everybody who's listening or watching this podcast, I want you to, to, to as Vitz is telling you all about the amazing work that Special Effect does for disabled gamers, I want you to body roll <laughs> away from your device to go and get yourself some hydration, go and get yourself a drink, and then body roll back. Even if you're listening to this, <laughs> even if you're listening to this on a bus or a train, body roll away and then <laughs> body adjusted. roll back. <laughs> and we'll see you in a minute. <laughs> What's good, everybody? I hope you're having the best day. The Words About Games podcast is fundraising for the Fabulous team over at Special Effect. If you didn't know, Special Effect is a charity that transforms the life of physically disabled people all over the world through innovative use of technology. The heart of their work is the mission to maximize fun by helping people control video games to the best of their abilities. They're bringing families and friends together, having a profoundly positive impact in quality of life, confidence, and rehabilitation. Amy Media and I have been working on a number of streams to bring you a whole host of shows, games, shenanigans, and more. Everything from ranking Resident Evil, becoming the noble team in Halo Reach, and finding our competitive streak in legally distinct and 90s game shows. We've got several more charity streams in the works, and with your help, we can get there. Special Effects is a charity near and dear to our hearts, and we'd love your support in raising as much money as possible to bring the joy of video games to so many more people. Simply click on the link in the description below of wherever you're enjoying this podcast, or scan the QR code you see now. That will take you to our Just Giving page, where you can learn more and donate. If you're not in a position to donate, that's more than okay. Times are tough and we understand. Please consider sharing our Just Giving page on social media. It will help spread the word and the work that we're doing. Thanks for listening. And for now, let's get back to the podcast. And we are back. Hope everybody enjoyed that break. I hope you did the, the body roll. Um, if you didn't, I'm very disappointed in you. But now it's time <laughs> for Indie Game of the Week. This is the thing we do every week where we talk about a cool looking upcoming indie game that looks cool and if you like the sound of it the link is in the description to the steam store page you should click on that link and then you should wish list the game but also while you're down there we've also got a link to our steam curator page which i will remember to update on a weekly basis at some point in the future <laughs> but it has more than 100 previous indie games of the week so you can go through see a bunch of fucking cool indie games but this week's indie game of the week is thank you edge magazine which i believe is behind my it was behind my head before but i think i moved it um, I saw it in Edge Magazine. If you live in the UK, you should get Edge Magazine. It's great. Detective Dotson. What is Detective Dotson, you might you might be asking? It's a story-driven adventure game set in modern-day India. Meet with colourful characters and use disguises to get information. Explore the richly detailed streets of India to collect clues and complete the evidence board. Solve cases as Dotson, the reluctant detective who wants to be a Bollywood star. The Indian dream right there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks really cool. Like it's a cool it's got this cool um pixel art aesthetic, which you know we're all fans of here on the Words About Games podcast. Um And the demo available. And there is a demo available. But it just looks like a fun time. And you know, mm -hmm. who who doesn't want to play as a reluctant detective who also wants to be a Bollywood star? I, I think secretly agree. all Indians want to be Bollywood stars, and as your resident Indian here, this is true. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's just um, if it's just um, what's the word I'm looking for <laughs> contained to just Indian people. I would love to be a Bollywood star. I think it looks like a lot. I of think fun. you make it. Yeah. Like <laughs> if I if I want to like be an actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like and I'm not in Star Trek. Like I feel like that mm -hmm. would that would be the other dream. It's just like 
But then we get, we've already had the Star Trek musical crossover. We need the Star Trek Bollywood crossover. We do need the well. Star Trek Bollywood crossover. We're going to make that mm -hmm. happen. We have to make that happen now. There you go. But yeah, there's a lot of dancing. There's a lot of disguises. It looks like there's a lot of hijinks and shenanigans in this game. Um, oh, yeah. And I like hijinks and shenanigans and dancing. Yeah, the trailer uh... is playing silently on my laptop. <laughs> There's a really interesting line from the, the blurb here. It bothers, quote, it bothers us that while 20% of the world lives here, India is missing its video game culture. We're on a mission to fix this, and we would love your feedback and support. Uh, you got to love that. Hell yeah. I've always said, we've always talked about it. We, we're like, I love playing games from different cultures. Um, well, yeah, we, we whacked lyrical by Vember. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you, you guys fucking really love Vember. Um, mm -hmm. There was that... Uh, the game from about from Taiwan about Taiwanese history, the horror game Detention. Um, I really, really love that. And like, like you, you can get those fresh perspectives, right? It's like Absolutely. I've played a million horror games. Not much surprises me in the horror genre these days. But when you draw your like creatures and, and aesthetics and and like stuff from a horror game from a different culture that I don't really know that much about, you can surprise the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And like it's great. Would be tropey to people that <laughs> yeah. culture region. And I'm just, just like, like what the fuck is that? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, Detective Amazing. Dotson, go give it a wish list. Um, go support indie games. But you know what? Miss your mission. If you didn't do the body roll, um, and again, like I'm disappointed in you, but you can, you can negate that disappointment go out and buy an indie game right right now redeem yourselves in the eyes of amy redeem yourselves in the eyes of this entire podcast <laughs> go out and buy an indie game any indie Keith, game sadly there's no redeeming you because you didn't back amy up but everybody else yeah, you're not getting you redeemed because still. you didn't you didn't you didn't quash those console thief allegations but everybody else <laughs> who didn't do that if you did the body roll i still think you should buy an indie game but you know you the did thing the is now roll. Because you're saying body roll, we need to get an animation of a body roll rolling across on the screen when you say a body roll. <laughs> Someone doing Fitz, a body roll. You know how like, we're making a yes, poison possibly. ivy emote. <laughs> 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 <And more. laughs> yes, ma'am. Can, can we get a can we get a body roll emote going as well? <laughs> I'll, I'll learn that to emotion. No, I'm right. an you know, animation, not an emote. You know I'm how like animation. it needs to be rolling. On well, the you screen. know how like Star Fox has do a barrel roll. Like we need yeah. do a, do a body roll. Girl, body roll. And that is legally distinct from anything Star Fox or any Nintendo character has ever said. And I know how much you love things that are legally distinct. This, this is true. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway. While while I'm talking, while I've got while I'm talking to you, Fitz, can mm -hmm. you explain what what the fuck you want to talk about this week? <laughs> yeah. So this is a, a story that broke on IGN. Uh, I'll read the title and then we'll get into it. Uh, so, a prominent accessibility advocate worked with studios and inspired change, but she never actually existed. Dun, dun, Sounds dun. like one of those mysteries movies, but it's all the facts. Yeah, so this is uh, from uh, IGN and the link is in the uh, uh, in the notes and I imagine the description where you'll be able to... Yeah, I'll have to put that there. It it's a... really big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this is a uh, a tale about a individual named uh, Susan Banks, and uh, this is a uh, person that created Can I Play That, a site dedicated to coverage accessibility and dis from Great the disabled site. perspective. Yep. Uh, and then uh, they passed away, uh, and the industry lamented her loss and the work that led to raising awareness for accessibility in games, particularly for deaf and hard of hearing individuals. Uh, then it turned out that this a Cody Craven character turned up, and uh, this is an individual that uh, allegedly Banks met and uh, then began a relationship with. Sadly, uh, Banks had both legs amputated after an accident with a KitchenAid uh, mixer. Uh, allegedly, it fell on one foot, and they had an operation on that leg, and then there was complications, and the other leg was amputated. Now it turns out that uh, this Craven completely fabricated this persona of Susan Banks and allegedly the work that they uh, did as this persona uh, working in the accessibility space 
Uh, there's a uh, there's a couple of quotes that I just want to read uh, directly from the article, but I do recommend that you go ahead and read the piece because it is a wild ride. Uh, so Craven was uh, more or less the the public face of of banks. Uh, their persona would kind of identify that because of their uh, uh, because of their disabilities, they wouldn't uh, banks, as it were, wouldn't appear on like Zoom calls and things like that because uh, you know uh, uh, Zoom calls are hard when you're deaf, as I would, as I would imagine. So uh, Craven did a lot of the uh, the the public persona, so uh, you know being on social media and things like that. Uh, so for uh, uh, in the whole investigation piece uh, around this, uh, the, the 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 journalist in question did a little bit of digging and uh, quote Craven allegedly received gifts and consistent praise and attention every time he would post about Banks's ailments or recoveries. In order to prevent any legal ramifications, particularly if Craven was misleading clients, the source hired a private investigator, a retired Chicago police officer who proved to work on an associate of the source. The goal of the investigation was to find concrete proof of Banks' existence. Several days later, the investigator returned with no information. No immigration record, address, employment record, marriage license, or birth certificate was found. Banks, according to the investigator, was not a real person. Uh, so... This Craven person uh, alleged that Susan Banks uh, supposedly passed away on 4th of March 2019. Then they uh, made a GoFundMe uh, in order to, to crowdfund in honor of uh, Susan Banks to, to raise money, which would go for a to, to good cause. And being the good uh, folks that they are, other people in the accessibility space were championing this GoFundMe because uh, they saw uh, this Susan Banks <laughs> as a person who did good. So good, in fact, that at an awards uh, show, she has an award named after her. <laughs> the people can win the Susan Banks Award for a person who allegedly don't exist any anyway. Uh, but yeah, Steven, Steven Spawn uh, uh, of Able Gamers, they shared it directly on their platform. They gave it a huge uh, boost in visibility, and uh, I would imagine a lot of people uh, donated to the cause because it got that quote unquote endorsement uh, from Steven. Uh, but after. Uh, Craven killed off uh, that character. He made two more. Uh, also, he was in relationships with these people as well. Uh, so there's Tibi Hamid and uh, Damaris Deb uh, Burl Vaughan. Uh, the Deb character wrote stories on Medium highlighting the great work in accessibility space, such as the implementation of the Haley Cooper chapter in Marvel Spider-Man 2. Uh, for those who haven't had a chance to play that game, uh, Haley is a character who is uh, deaf and uh, she was born deaf. And uh, in the chapter itself, you play as a, and you have a, uh, what I imagine is a realistic interpretation of uh, how she perceives the world and uh, how she interacts with the people of New York City. Uh, cool. And it's really, it's a really touching chapter it's and. Totally unrelated, just for my benefit yeah. alone. Is this the same character that was in Miles Morales? Yes. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, so then. He starts creating these, uh, or he created these two, two new other relationships. Tui Hamu was first. Uh, that was around about 2012. And then this uh, Vaughn character was in 2023. So not too long ago. Uh, and then people started to uh, dig into it and then find out, okay, these are phony too. Uh, so the, the, the article goes on and there's much more. Uh, kind of evidence of uh, Craven just being a charlatan and kind of catfishing the whole industry when it comes to uh, championing that they are indeed an, uh, an advocate for accessibility, but have gone about it in kind of the worst way you can. Uh, and then I just want to <laughs> quote uh, this, uh, this paragraph here when IGN reached out to Craven before they published this story kind of thing. Uh, quote, <clears throat> IGN reached out to Craven ahead of publication via email. He responded, requesting that we not publish the piece, but forcefully declining to comment further. Shortly after that, he began deleting his presence on social media. Currently, he is uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Game Content Trigger Database, the database associated with Discord server, and Vord's media page has been removed. This, These aren't the actions of an innocent person. No, definitely not. Yeah, you definitely don't start deleting everything if you've like, got nothing to hide. Yeah, if you've got like the nuclear option and you twist it's not those a nuclear keys. option. I never understand why people do this. It's like, dude, the internet is forever. <laughs> you yeah. can't delete anything off of the internet. 
Uh, yeah, but uh, to your point, kind of thing, the, the journalists here, they like use things like the Wayback Machine to, to bring up old Medium pages <laughs> to yeah. go through articles that uh, they wrote kind of thing. But yeah, it was just a weird, weird story of this uh, Cody Craven who <laughs> created three other personas that we know about. There might have been many more <laughs> yeah. that have gone unnoticed. But for, for one of them to gain such notoriety and uh, I, obviously accessibility is a uh is a vertical that we all uh here on the podcast and i'm sure many of you uh dear listeners kind of thing that strive for and, and want to to exceed and do well and uh uh and further the cause within the in the sector but when you have when you have characters like craven here it kind of it kind of puts a a dampener on highlighting new voices in the space and it's one of these where Sadly, you do kind of have to do your due diligence, due diligence even, and it's it's all very well going on good faith that these uh, these are the actions of a good faith person, but clearly in this instance, they're they're not. So it's more of a a cautionary tale. But yeah, it's wild stuff. It's yeah, I mean, it's an insane story. Um, but the it sucks. I mean, it sucks in general. But like, it sucks that like the damage that this could possibly do to potentially do exactly. sorry to to like you know the accessibility uh, movement They're just in the accessibility space where it's like trust has been lost yeah it damages the credibility yeah and it damages the credibility of other people who who were involved like Stephen mm -hmm. spawn who you mentioned yeah. <clears throat> obviously you know Stephen was was retweeting the the charity stuff which yeah may or may not have been a complete scam um and and that damages his credibility, even though I'm sure he did nothing wrong, and he was just doing like doing it in good faith. And absolutely, the like it sucks because like you you want to approach stuff like this in good faith. Like you want to see someone mm. championing something like video game accessibility, um, and saying, "Hey, I've got to go for me to like continue the good work of of this person who passed away," and go, "Yeah, I'll, I'll support that." Like I'm not mm -hmm. going to to do what I normally do and dig really deep into this to make sure I'm not supporting a fucking, you know, racist clout chase and whatever. Yeah. And then it's like, so you just do. And like, I would have done it. I'm sure if I'd seen it, I may, in fact, I may have, I don't know. I don't remember everything I did on Twitter. Um, mm. and then it's just like, like at what point, so do I now have to like be wary of, of everybody who's like talking about, like, cause you say we're big into the accessibility stuff. It's like, do I now have to like vet, everything i see about accessibility <laughs> before i start posting about accessibility it's like uh -huh. i mean i know when you come down here you're gonna grab my neck to make sure i'm not wearing a scooby-doo mask <laughs> just to see <laughs> let's see who you bizarre. really are <laughs> 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 uh but yeah it, it's really disappointing that they felt the need to do this in the first place and whatever the work that they wanted to do and clearly did uh but just did it under the under the personas of all these people they made up kind of thing why they couldn't just do it off their off their own back and on their own platform whether they've got some yeah. other deep dark secrets that they're trying to kind of deal yeah. with but uh it's like I'm, I'm, I'm yeah and i'm going wild speculation here this is all mm -hmm. like a legend stuff it's like I, yeah. I just wonder if at some point <clears throat> this person this craven person you know, was trying to do the accessibility stuff and was trying to like, you know, like do whatever they were trying to do mm -hmm. in the beginning. And then, you know, like it was pointed out to them that, hey, maybe they should have a disabled person actually, maybe they should actually work with disabled people. And yeah. instead of reaching out to work with disabled people, they made one up mm -hmm. um, and then made more of them up. Um, well, it's, I think it's that thing of the the lie just went deeper and deeper and deeper and that's got to be a headache <laughs> you know, to kind of keep track of what you said like, and, especially when you've got multiple characters on the go oh know? sure <laughs> yeah like i can't handle a game of i can't handle lying in a game of among us i don't know how, yeah. how this person did this for so many years <laughs> i mean i don't know I, I i was i was doing weapons and and then things happened yeah well, you said sure. you were you said you were in engineering like did i oh fuck yeah <laughs> But um, but no, like this, this, this is just, this is just terrible. And like you, you say, like you know, like it damages credibility. It's like the this made up, allegedly made up person, Susan Banks, founded a website, can I play that that I've been using as a source for years. 
Like, mm-hmm. and it's a good website. And I, I encourage more people to to just go and visit that website. But, I mean, that's one hell of a of a revelation. I can't imagine really how people is. who who like Steve and Spawn and other people who work up, who who contribute to Can I Play That, um, and and all these other people. I can't I can't imagine how they're feeling right now. Absolutely, it'd be like um, finding out Moody doesn't exist. Correct, yeah. Like, I don't know how I would react to that. <laughs> One day I won't exist. Shut up, Moody. Could just walk out in front of a bus and get it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was I'm, about to make a joke, <laughs> but now I'm not. I can't make a joke. Like, I can't. Yeah. Um, this is, yeah, it is a absolutely insane crappy story that does nothing but damage accessibility it's like it's bad enough that we have idiots out on the internet to fight against accessibility even for the for the lamest of reasons all the time and now you've got this that had sites sources and everything uh and people who are big in the accessibility space um tweet in and all like this and this is just and this person is completely fake and this and the other person has done nothing but lie about it and created this persona for years now and that's the worst thing about it this could be massively damaging towards accessibility in general where people are just like what can we trust is this really yeah. does this really help a person with their co- to control in the game and everything like that it could go to that extremes because of it because we already got idiot politicians who are saying do well do we really have to listen to scientists and all like that yes we have to listen to people who understand these things and whatnot and now sadly because experts. of this because of this person it, i'm sure there's <laughs> Per, pe- there's people out there who are now questioning can we even trust the experts out there which is deplorable however like we're, we are raising money for special effects which which helps accessibility and people with who are disabled gamers and everything like for all the, like that could hurt them and i hope it doesn't and everything and this is just like one of those things of just where a person has been allowed or not been allowed like this person has allowed themselves to just continue this lie and go and go and go and go, not caring about the ramifications to the ma- the more grander, more important thing that is accessibility in video games and for gamers in general. And this could be very damaging. And like this person should be very much ashamed of themselves. Hide all the hell you want, uh, person. You, they'll probably be able to find you and whatnot. And I hope they do. And like lock the bastard up <laughs> yes. at the end of the day I want them to get help that, that's that's the main thing because I think all, yeah. all of these is kind of evidence of uh, the, or at least suggests that they have uh, a lot to, to deal with and obviously if there's any criminal activity then uh, for sure they, they should be dumped for the full extent of the law and all that jazz but it, it's one of these where uh, the, the fact that they felt the, the need to do this on multiple occasions it probably warrants them speaking to some sort of professional in order to kind of delve into whether there's any underlying problems and maybe they can they can work through that because but for sure uh to your point moody like if they if they've broken the law in any way shape or form if the whole go for me thing was a scam then for sure <laughs> like take whatever take whatever means you you need to kind of thing but it's just sad at the end of the day I, the 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 weird part of my brain like goes to when they were creating the Susan Banks character, it's did they have a storyboard first and say, okay, well, she's going to have this KitchenAid, uh, uh, kitchen, uh, KitchenAid mixer drop on her foot. Uh, okay, that's not sad enough. You know, we focus tested that. That's not that's not going to play. We need her to lose a leg. Okay, right. Still, that's not working. Okay, she needs to lose the other leg. And it's kind of how far? How did did he just was he laying the tracks in front of the trainers that were going, or did he have this whole storyboard of that, and then it just. Uh, spun out into an even larger web of lies, but I don't uh, know, and I don't yeah. want to know. <laughs> like, yeah, I hope this person gets help, and then is uh, is tied like, to the full sure. extent of the law for everything that they did. <laughs> if this per- if this person has problems, yeah, sure, I hope they get I hope they get help. Yeah. Like, the, but the, I mean, that's the charitable way to, re- to read the situation. The uncharitable way to re- read the situation is they're just clout chasing. Um, yes, and it just spun wildly out of control. Um, in which case, I, I hope they fuck off and never are never seen again um mm-hmm. and 
just to the like you to what Moody was 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 saying, it's like yeah, because the next big like the next thing that's like a big fundraiser, say for 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 some for some accessibility thing, like is going to have like this is going to be tarnished by by yeah. this happening, where it's you know like questions will be asked and the people who argue against accessibility as a fucking profession for some dumbass reason, like will mm -hmm. bring this up constantly in the yeah. comments and the like quote tweets and whatever else um and that sucks but and on another level like as somebody who you know runs charity events um focused around like in the gaming space it's just like this is the second high profile charity thing that that's broken where it's just like oh this might have been a, a scam by a person it's like can we not can we yes. not with charity <laughs> like it's hard enough to raise money for charity as it is without you dickheads out here fucking trying to scam people Please is stop. The one thing which is supposed to be like sanctimonious, not even yeah. holy, but you know, to, to, to help people. So like, like, there's like there's real people out here trying to fucking help other people with charity drives and charity fundraisers and charity initiatives, and you're not making it any fucking easier with this shit. This is true. But yeah, stop using GoFundMe for starters. There's platforms out there that take the money directly from people who donate and give it directly to the people who are supposed to get it. It's like our charity mm -hmm. fundraiser. That money doesn't touch me. I don't see that money. I see yeah. the donation tracker go up. It goes to the company and it goes straight to the special effect. It's like start doing that because <laughs> like this, this is twice now where it's like, oh, the money is going directly to the person, and oh, it turned out yeah. the money might not be going to the, the charity. It's just fucking. It, it, Drives in no way, shape, or form does any money need to rest in people's accounts before it yeah. goes to the place it needs. There is no reason <laughs> for you to personally collect the money and give it to the charity. Like there's, 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 you don't have to do that. Twice now, this has happened in the yeah. video game space in the last year. We don't and, need middle people. It and does and it, it for you? Yeah, you don't need to be a middle person. And it goes, but it goes back to that that thing I was just talking about. On top of the, it makes it way more hard, way more difficult. It is the next time I see a big GoFundMe charity thing, I'm going to be looking at it, going, "Well, hang on a minute, yep. why are they using a GoFundMe?" Mm -hmm. So even like as somebody who you know wants to raise money for charity, wants to signal boost other people's charity efforts, even I'm going to look at some some things now and be like, "Hang on Have a minute, do extra due diligence, hang yeah. on a minute, chief, is this is this legit?" It's like um, what happened, I don't know if it was the f uh, it happened last year, but the completionist with all the backlash that yeah, happened. That was the other one I was uh, like, I yeah. Mm -hmm. there, yeah. Yeah, it's like everyone. Yeah, he had the just, money resting in his account. Just resting just, yeah, resting in his big <laughs> yeah, old sure. account. Yeah. And straight out of Father Ted. It's like, what can you trust? It's like, this is going to, this potentially could hurt all other streamers and content creators who, like, yeah, again, I don't give much credence to them but that when they do charity streams and everything like that i'm always looking thinking oh this could be a really good thing and everything and this could hurt them where people don't want to risk giving their money because they don't know it's going to go mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. people might people might be thinking like that for hours and everything like that like they could be literally going to think well i'm not gonna i know you're streaming soon and i'm not gonna give you more money because i don't trust you enough to be able to know that you guys are gonna send it you know and i wouldn't i wouldn't blame them all, all we can say is that we do intend to give this money to special effects yeah, we have nothing to do with it. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time like i understand that the reservations from people if there's anyone out there and whatnot and that this is the thing about this is what this could do like hopefully it's going to be a small event and like i didn't know that this happened or anything like that but like again i don't see a lot of things that happened on social media and whatnot and i don't really look on ign these days um if i find it any story that i'm interested in if i want to read something and um so i didn't know about it until today and whatnot and so it's like like hopefully uh it's like a lot of people are like me that they just won't pay attention to this and won't even see it and it'll be a thing that gets swept under and that people won't realize and that accessibility can still be pushed forward people who are doing charity streams can still raise the money without people worrying about that there isn't going to the charities and everything like that because they most of them pretty much do that and and, and so on so it's like hopefully it's going to be just nothing or not 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 nothing hopefully this person will be like hopefully like what fit says like needs help get finds that help and everything but also if he's done he's held accountable to yeah. he's held accountable, <laughs> accountable properly and and so on and then the accessibility can move forward to continue and everything like that but no, that's the hope that. 
the the yeah the, one of the other takeaways is to your point is uh when people do do charity initiatives uh, they are just even more clear about the the steps that are involved so people do have that uh kind of assurance that the the money is, is going straight to the charity that there's no other shenanigans at play kind of thing yeah uh yeah that, that's the only positive <clears throat> takeaway that can come from this i think i agree yeah i agree too so really i've heard from a pretty reliable source that dino yeah, crisis and monster hunter are just basically the same thing Apparently, I mean, both yeah. of the games have two words in, the, in their names. What's that? Ah, it means they're both two words long. Dino Crisis. Oh, oh okay. Oh. Yeah, that, that went right out of what it meant. <laughs> There's something else. My brain didn't click what you said there. I apologize there. But, um, yeah, so I just got brought to my attention this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Vitz. I think, welcome, I, think it was, I think it was a sign just fits so <laughs> what I asked. Fitz was like, no, I don't want to talk about that moody here. Have a look at this, mate. This might um, spice, you, spice up your life. <laughs> yeah, no, to be fair, like your first topic suggestion, I was like, mm, do we have to? And then like I couldn't be bothered, I couldn't find anything out and then And then Vitz and then Vitz shared, shared this, this and the first the first gif is the is the gym from the office going like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, Get God. Out of the way, I know moody. what's gonna happen. <laughs> 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 Here it comes. Yeah, yeah, I feel like Tanjiro from uh, so, Demon Slayer when I did that gift. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, Resident Evil and Dino Crisis creator Shin Shinji Mikami said he doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of space for a new Dino Crisis game thanks to the success of Capcom's Mon Monster Hunter series. I don't know what those two things have to do with each other, but okay. They have <laughs> no dinosaurs space apes. in them. <laughs> well, they've got dinosaurs in them. Oh no. Yeah. Apparently. Um... <laughs> uh, just just uh, elaborate on the story then for sure we can get your commentary uh so mikami said he was surprised at the fan reaction to the dino crisis uh but it seems popularity of monster hunters put that put him off continuing that series oh, uh, quote, i'm very yes. surprised to hear that <laughs> end quote so mikami in relation to fans wanting more dino crisis quote the awesomeness of dinosaurs and the stuff you can do with dinosaurs that's been kind of really nailed down by monster hunter in recent years so if, if I were to decide to remake or new version of Dino Crisis, I don't feel there's really a, a lot of space for that kind of game right now. Just since Monster Hunter has become such a big game. But yeah, it's surprising. End quote. Uh, so yeah, the, all, all, all the, the survey that uh, all the Dino Crisis dozens uh, jumped in on, uh, it's like, we hear you, but no. <laughs> Well, that's just Mikami. You know, you, I, just to be completely yeah. clear, it does not work for Capcom anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, as long as Capcom's making the big bucks with Monsanto, sorry, no more, no more. Like, that's my point. Like, I think that's one of my real points is what the fuck has it got to do with him? <laughs> you left so long ago. <laughs> Unless he has something in a contract then, which he somehow swiggled in that they have to, he has to get give permissions and, and to do it, which would be stupid and I don't believe would be in I the don't contract. Think Capcom or will be dumb enough to put that in a contract. Yeah, no. But, like, <laughs> The guy left Capcom. Actually, now I'm getting mad. The guy left Capcom, <laughs> right? And like, is is here? He's like, well, there's not a whole lot of space for a new Dino Crisis game because of Monster Hunter series. The guy left Capcom and then basically remade Resident Evil. <laughs> like, yeah, with the Evil Within. <laughs> so, like, if I sat here and said, "Hey, Shinji, I don't think there's any space for the Evil Within because of the success of Resident Evil," like, it's such a what? You're supposed to be one of the greatest critters in oh you you you, you can talk. genius can still say stupid things <laughs> there's a fine line between genius and stupidity apparently <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. and this guy decided to be stupid today in my opinion um yeah no i don't uh, believe this whatsoever uh it's his opinion i get that i get where he's coming from when it comes to like two monster hunter monster hunter for capcom has become a juggernaut for them and like next year just from i believe from just monster hunter, monster hunter wilds itself it's going to be one of their best selling games probably ever uh mm -hmm. next year and i think they're going to have a wildly successful year next year just for one game alone which is exciting to think and everything which is great to hear as well for capcom capcom have been nothing on a great uh, rejuvenation for at least the last 10 years and I think especially like starting with Resident Evil 7 Resident Evil. and Excel then Primal. bringing it up 
yeah yeah exo <laughs> family yeah and and so on like they've brought they've been nothing but banger after banger and whatnot um and they've done an incredible job and like i'm so happy like years and years ago everyone was like thinking could capcom go bust or someone gonna buy capcom to save them and everything like that but no they don't need that they've done incredibly well which is fantastic um i don't agree that there isn't space i think there's a huge amount of space to have for dino crisis uh to come back to be a remake heck um and whatnot um i think you can just do this game because i've stand i stand by it that dinosaurs and no offense are more popular than fucking zombies they are i'm sorry and dino crisis that done but monster hunter itself kind of basically proves that because it's the best selling capcom game ever <laughs> sorry zombie <laughs> game you're not that anymore <laughs> i don't think like i don't think monster hunter is selling well because of the dinosaurs i do like, i agree mm. i agree i'm just throwing it in there for for a cheap jab for me yeah sure you th you, th you know you throw all the cheap jabs you want don't don't let me stop you like but it just goes down to the if you drill down to the bedrock of they're two completely different games. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, the, yeah, that's the thing about it. Like, my hope is next year that you'll three get together and we just smash this game like crazy next year. And I think it's going to be, I hope it's going to be fucking amazing because I really think it's going to be a great game. But yeah, Dino Crisis is, yeah, I know a lot of people basically would say it's just a Resident Evil clone. I don't care. Exactly. Not a monster. I don't hunter. care. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what? You, you want to know what else is a Resident Evil clone? Dead Space, and I fucking love Dead Space. It evil was within. awesome. <laughs> the Evil Within. I prefer Evil Within too than the first one. But either way, yeah, I like I, it whatever. for the joke. That one joke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but but um, like it's Dino Crisis. I think it, yes, it didn't sell as well compared to Resident Evil. I do appreciate that, but I think we're in a completely different one gaming a landscape but also entertainment landscape dinosaurs weren't really that big in the 90s to yes i know we had jurassic park and everything but Excuse it me. wasn't really that huge if you let me get my point across ladies and gentlemen i will finish it even if it sounds wrong okay <laughs> let me finish don't um, you start with shinji mikami bullshit <laughs> <laughs> And now I'm bringing in my own bullshit here. Yeah, no, but the, the things were a lot more different in the 90s compared to what they are now as well. Film was far bigger than video games in the 90s and everything. So, like, so dinosaurs, yes, in the film verse was massive. I can appreciate that. Yeah, Jurassic Park, Lost World, Jurassic Park 3. Um, Alan, wake up. <laughs> Alan, wake up. Um, and whatnot. And um, it's... <laughs> So it was, it was, it's a completely different landscape and everything, but now it's not. Video games is the most profitable entertainment out there. I think Dino Crisis, you do it in that RE engine, that beautiful, gorgeous RE engine. My just goodness, I think you now. could have... Hmm? You're just pitching a remake now. <laughs> I am. I admit this. I want them just to remake the game. I've admitted this all the time. Never. I don't care. <laughs> just remake the noticed. fucking game, Capcom. You have the stuff. Just do it already. You teased me. You literally tickled my fucking balls two last year with Exo Primal, and you pissed me off. You pissed everyone off because Dino Crisis was the thing that was fucking trending after Exo Primal. Primal was announced. <laughs> so I, I hope at the end of the day. Capcom kind of ignores uh, Shinki uh, Mikami um, as legendary is in everything like that, but he's no longer there. I do hope they are actually listening to the fans um, and they do either Maybe do a remake, thousand. do a remake, or do or do or start fresh and do a whole new franchise from it. Fitz. Uh, I Hello. don't. <laughs> You've been wanting to I'm speak finished. for a while. <laughs> I'm finished, but okay. Uh, it's okay. So one movie comes down from a hundred. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, coming there, down. There, there is a uh i get where camp comedy is coming from in terms of there is a there's sometimes there's a dangerous listening to uh, exactly what fans want because uh there is an old adage of people don't know what they want until you tell them uh or show them what they want or mm. uh what they really want is what they're saying but with a little twist uh, added to it and in in the same way that uh there's an adage going around today of uh, all the people who uh, was really Jones in to go see Morbius again in cinema, and Sony oh. heard all this uh, uh, heard all this feedback. And all said, the right, memes. We're re-releasing it. And he made like twelve dollars again at time. the box office, uh, and obviously it cost a lot more than that to, to uh, re-release the the movie and whatnot. 
if Shinji Mukami was like, okay, right. Yeah, earlier on this year, I announced a new game studio because I've left Tango, Tango Gameworks. Uh, Kamoi, uh, I believe you pronounce that. And if you're saying, okay, based on these uh, or this rationale, for my first title is not going to be like a, a, a Dino Crisis uh, X type, uh, type of title. It's going to be something else. Oh, you can you can kind of, I mean, yeah, the, the logic is flawed. But if he says, uh, okay, I don't feel there's a space for dinosaurs at the moment, then that's fine because we're going to do X, Y, and Z title kind of thing. But he's not, he's just speaking out of his ass when it comes to, uh, you know, just weighing in, uh, throwing in a, a, a grenade of a comment, <laughs> just saying... You know, the two completely different games. Uh, I, I don't think there's space for both of them to exist at the same time, but uh, <laughs> who knows? I also have another argument before <laughs> I was like from interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he'd just he been trying to talk for so long. I, was like, I just need to get him in. <laughs> Basically, you jumped on me, just shut me up to get him in. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, sure. Um, <laughs> this is the best time to do it. Yes, the game will probably take, I would say, about four years to get making if it hasn't, or if it hasn't started development. You know, um, and whatnot. As a single player game, I think they could get it done in four years, probably. But you know, I could be wrong. Either way, I don't care. Nostalgia is fucking rampant right now. And even though people fucking criticize oh, it like hell. No, you know they, what? That's a good point. Yeah. People criticize it like hell. People also fucking eat it up. We've just had a fucking Deadpool movie that was nothing but nostalgia. And it's made around $1.3 billion worldwide. Does that mean make it's a great movie? Doesn't mean now. Uh, a little bit. Uh, but it's. That's the thing about nostalgia. People are whiffing up nostalgia right now, and I think Dino Crisis is the nostalgia that everyone who loves Capcom are begging them to do. Like, everyone loved it when Resident Evil 2 came back as a remake. That nostalgia was fucking rampant. Same goes for Resident Evil 3. It was rampant, rampant when it came to nostalgia. Resident Evil 4 was the same thing and everything, and everybody's loving nothing but nostalgia right now. We've had nothing but nostalgia for a lot of franchises and everything, and yeah... I mean, I get your point, and also, like, if you're going to capitalize on nostalgia, it has to be before people are sick of nostalgia, but on yeah. to your Resident Evil 3 point specifically, about nostalgia for the original Resident Evil 3, I vividly remember having a metaphorically fist fight people <laughs> who would tell me that Resident <laughs> Evil 3 sucked. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, but the, the marketing and everything and the excitement for that game when it was coming back out again, people were excited for and loved. So I think for me, like, the nostalgia for it was there and everything, just from that alone. I get where you're coming from, especially after you did a great video and everything about it. Uh, and talking Time about magazine. it and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> Four years <laughs> now, for video, Everybody, I'm sure Emil will put it in the link below. Nah. Um, <laughs> uh, me and Vitz are getting Amy to work today. <laughs> it's not that hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's the thing about, like, for me, it's like, it's the... Is the for me for a lot of is for me is the game I think a lot of people for the majority of in the gaming bubble are asking for to come back in some sort of way. People didn't ask for the Last of Us for the remade or the Last of Us Two be remade and everything like that, but they happened and everything like that. And I agree with the criticisms against that. Like for me, that should have been at least done in ten years time or thirty years time or something like that. But it isn't. They did it ten years or even for Last of Us. For four years? <laughs> Something like that. Even way, years. they did that. They did yeah, that. Nice. That was their choice. I didn't fully agree with it. I don't really care at the same time. It, it's yeah, it's, there's, it's there's what's done is done. External factors as to why the, the timing of The Last of Us remake because of, uh, you know, the TV sure. show and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's not one. We need one to judge them full price again. They'll pay it. No, that's let's, re exactly. let's remaster the game exactly. on the same platform oh, fuck off. exactly you think you liked one you're gonna love two what we do in two but yeah uh, so it turns out show. Dino Crisis is the one game that Moody will stamp up and get a PS5 Pro for today if possible <laughs> if they announce, if fucking they facts Vince I'll go out there I'll fucking strip for it for money to get the cash for it there you go what Wait, you'll strip for that, but you won't strip for charity. How dare you? How dare exactly. you? <laughs> My bars are very low. You see what I mean about it enough. being hard to run a charity fundraiser? <laughs> yeah. Maybe you really said, fuck them kids. <laughs> fuck them kids. I want dinosaurs. <laughs> mm. No, it's, uh, let's think about it. Like, my hope is like, um, I don't know what it's actually called, but I'll just go GOG. 
who just released the, the GOG, yeah, who mm-hmm. got GOG Galaxy, who just re released the the retro, the the old, ver- the original versions of Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3. Mm-hmm. I, I'm curious of how they have sold. I want to know. Because if they've sold well, I think that should just tell them alone that, so. oh yeah, that those are those. And if they did, that hopefully will incentivize them to go, you know what? Let's do Dino Crisis 1 and 2. And let's see how it goes. And then if those fucking do well, I hope that'll kick freaking Capcom Crisis 3. up the ass. That's what, uh, we do, we, there's no 3 game. I don't know what you're talking about. It said right oh, here, the last three. game in the series of Dino Crisis 3 released oh, in 2003. Three. I remember. No, 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 no. There's a Dino Crisis, it goes 1 and 2, and uh, they tried to do a sequel, and no one played it, and they, uh, it sadly just was never created. It got um, put off for tax cuts, tax reasons. No, no, no. Wrong right. company. They, you got that. I've loved. Uh, I so am going to throw I know, I know Risen- a copy of Dino Crisis 3 at you. <laughs> <laughs> When I see you next you're, time, I'm like, here it is, you reckon, motherfucker. <laughs> you reckon there's enough time for me to return this and then get Dino Crisis 3 instead? You won't need to return <laughs> that. I don't think Dino Crisis 3 is worth very much. <laughs> Just yeah, I think, uh, Actually, I think, uh, I'm visiting you. Two I'm, more expensive I'm visiting you. I'm bringing Dino Crisis 2 to Moody. I'll just throw 3 in. I'll just be like, hey, you There me? you go. Have fun. Just swap the discs out and see what happens. <laughs> No, I've already had enough. I've already had enough. Like what happened to me? Segway <laughs> segwayed to the story. Got fucking I've debated by CEX. <laughs> fucking, I was like, I need Dino Crisis. Like, I need Dino Crisis. I need a copy. Like, I have a backup plan for the charity stream. But, like, I want to play it on the PlayStation. I want to play it with the original PlayStation hardware, the controller, everything. And, and like, I, 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 so I check it frequently, like, stock near me, like CEX. And, like, I saw one at my local, and I was like, shit. Like, and I'm supposed to be going to town. I literally made a de- I was supposed to be going to town and then coming back to the shops where my local CEX is to pick up a cake. And I literally did a fucking ridiculous... I went there first to get Dino Crisis, to go to town, to go back to there to get the cake. Because I was like, I don't want anyone else to buy Dino Crisis <laughs> before I get there, even though it's only a few hours. And I fucking bought it. I was so happy. The case was in such good condition. And then I opened it and I was like, oh, that's weird. That manual says Dino Crisis 2. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> that disc says Dino Crisis 2. Wait a minute. And so I was like, I wasn't very far away because I was like, I just want to look at the manual while I was waiting for a bus. Turned around, walked back. I was like, um, this is Dino Crisis 2. And like, there's a part of my brain that's like, Dino Crisis 2 costs more than Dino Crisis 1. Why are you taking it back? You basically just got a bargain. Um, But I wanted the first one, OBS. Like, I we didn't raise... 250 pounds for me to play the second Dino Crisis. Um, and then, and I was like, I, yeah, basically, it's... what I was hoping for was, yeah, yeah. he has Dino Crisis, and then, but they didn't have it. So someone traded that game in at CEX <laughs> in a Dino Crisis 1 box with Dino Crisis 2 in it. They bought it. <laughs> <laughs> there was a receipt in it. Someone had bought it from CEX. <laughs> And then oh, re-returned wow. it. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> it was already a receipt in the box. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, God damn. Someone well, took this game in. On the yeah, someone took this game in, like, without noticing the doubt. Which is fine, you know. Hmm. Dino Crisis, Dino Crisis 2. If you don't look at it closely, you might not notice. But the second person must have brought it back without even opening it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like... And, and you ruined my day. Whoever that person was, like I mm-hmm. now don't have Dino Crisis again. For for a brief shining moment, I thought I owned Dino Crisis, and then I didn't. <laughs> and I'm devastated. Right, if it comes to the worst, uh, when you come down here, we'll go to our local. No, no, it's fine. I, like, I, like I'm hoping I'll be able to pick it up then. But if I can't, it's fine. I've got contingency yeah. plans. I stand by that you play it down here. I've got the game. You don't need to do that. Have to wait so long, and then because we still got to do that, and then do the ten-hour stream. That's like nearly. That's like two months from now. Ten-hour stream will be like December. It's fine. No, I'm saying what I'm saying is, we'll just do Dino Crisis two stream. Mm. And then I'll play the third. Dino Crisis when I'm down at yours. Yeah, we'll do a Dino Crisis two stream because I will be All bringing right. you a copy of Dino Crisis two. No, that's just right. that's <laughs> so just... it's like, yeah, we'll here. Yeah, let's try. It. Let's try it yeah. out on stream. Yeah. I like that one better anyway. <laughs> did the, I forgot that? Did the thing do the things that you bought the adapters work for you to be able to stream? 
oh yeah everything's working um it's it's a bit fiddly i'm still working some stuff out because color mm. correction mm. OBS, obs doesn't allow you to do color correction by scene it's like global yes <laughs> so if i do color correction on perfect dark for example like of the n64 but then i switch over to like pc ps5 whatever that cut that that the colors are ridiculous. Like, you have to build like a whole new scene to, collection. I have yeah. to basically every time I switch between retro and modern, I have to keep fucking changing the settings manually because it's not in like it's not in the scene. Like I can't build a scene collection of retro. It's it's global mm. setting, like they're global settings, and I'm just like, like what? two windows of OBS open at the same time, but they won't let you do that. Yeah, yeah. It's like what did you do? Why did you do this? Like it's gonna make doing the ten hour stream interesting because <laughs> mm. I'm gonna have to keep stopping going to brbs and like fucking fiddling around if we switch between the two it's fucking god damn it obs (laughs) why isn't it a scene setting (laughs) i wonder if we can tie that to hotkeys maybe Uh, it's it's a discussion for another time well if you know after stealing an xbox 360 from keith apparently i guess when i go down to see you fits i'll just steal your steam deck (laughs) thought you admitted it there thought you admitted it (laughs) I'm not going to admit something. I, I'm not going to admit something I didn't do. <laughs> so I just realized, so because I clicked on it just to see. Um, so Gog have we, now released Resident Evil Two as well. So, yeah, so I'm yeah. just waiting for Resident Evil Three to download yeah. to come out, and I can I'll probably play them also. Of course, of course you will. They're amazing games. Even mm-hmm. three. I've always liked three. I'm not talking so. to you. Yeah, <laughs> she's not talking to me. The dear listener. No, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> right, we need to get out of here. Vitz, you've been playing a couple Hello. of games. Tell me about them quickly. I have. Uh, Phantom Spark was a recommendation from uh, your dear self, James. Oh, uh, so this is a uh, a racing game. It's a uh, available on Steam and other places. There is a demo available now. Uh, and it's a uh, futuristic racer akin to uh, Wipeout with a little bit of Trackmania in there. Uh, so uh, for regular listeners, uh, they know that I love a racing game. I love driving around in circles. Uh, this is not one of those games. This is more akin to Trackmania in the sense that you are racing against the clock and other people's times. Uh, but it plays really well. Uh, the the handling is really fantastic. There's a uh, the sorry, there's a set of NPC characters in there with beautiful hand drawn art, and uh, they have like a pseudo story of what's going on in the world and. For every time that you post, they will magically be able to beat it by like a, a few uh, fractions of a second. Then you got to go post a faster time and whatnot. Uh, the demo itself consists of uh, three different tracks, and uh, there's an online leaderboard with everybody in the world. As it stands right now, when I last logged in, I'm top like 300 uh, across everybody who's tried the demo so far. So I think it's still pretty competitive, but uh, I, I I don't need to be you know. And number one or anything like that so so that's all good uh but yeah it's really really fun i uh would have more fun if we was racing against uh other people at the same time as in like ai uh, controlled agents and things like that rather than just uh beating the clock there there is a obviously that's a uh a style of racing game when it comes to like rally and things like that uh but yeah but it's, it's highly worth checking out. Uh, the As I said, the, the demo is available, and uh, I don't think we're too far away from the launch of the full game, so Wait, Phantom, be sure to check that one out. Phantom Spark. Spark. Didn't it already come out? I'm sure it came out. Oh, maybe it has. Because I was looking it up today. Because I was like, what's this game? Yeah, it came out uh, 15th of August. Yeah. All right, then. Well, <laughs> yeah, go, go check it out and uh, go get it. So... Uh, yeah, but thank you for the recommendation. That was a very, very good one. Uh, you I, good it's one of my game. superpowers. I don't know. Mm-hmm. can't explain it. <laughs> very good at recommending uh, games, even if I personally am like, oh, I'm not going to touch that. But it looks like it's more like that. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the other game I'll be checking out uh, is Screamer 2. Uh, so fear not, friends. I've not picked up a scary-ass game. Uh, this is a racing game all the way from 1996, uh, which I first played on, uh, like, a Dell Pentium something or other uh, back in the day. Uh, this was developed by Milestone and published by uh, Virgin Interactive Entertainment, as it was back then. And uh, Publishers of Resident yeah, this... Evil 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this game was actually... Uh, I got this on uh, GOG, uh, and uh, I've had it for quite a while, and with the... Uh, 
the Windows re- reinstall I had to do a couple of months back. Uh, I've just forgotten to, to reinstall it. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm trying to jones in for a racing game. I'm trying to wean myself off Gran Turismo and play games which, uh, you know, I, it brings sparks some joy into my life. And Screamer 2 is one of them. And it, it's really good. The, it, obviously, it runs in like uh, whatever MS-DOS runs in, uh, like Dos a small box. instance on your... Yeah, that's it. Uh, and it's not... <laughs> Obviously, it's not ideal. It's not a remake in terms of it can use the full power of your uh, current PC in order to run a, an old game. So it is still limited to you know using 16 megabytes of RAM as its kind of top limit. It's not a good like thing. That. So you don't think you want the game running too fast. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point. <laughs> but, uh, no, it it's uh, it still handles amazingly. Obviously, the the visuals are, have dated, but uh, it's still a fun time to run around. The soundtrack still slaps. And uh, yeah, it's fun just to to scream around in. So yeah, nice. That's Sick. my little game check-in. Cool, that's good. I'll talk about my game next week. I was gonna make my game a, a top my topic, but uh, I haven't finished it, and I want to finish it. So mm. I'll just make it my topic next week when I finished it. Um, it's time for open credit get the head. Let's. See how quickly we can do this. This is the game we play every week where we try to guess the upper critic average of upcoming games. Whoever guesses closest to the score gets a point. If you manage to guess correctly, you get two points. Last week, we tried to guess the upper critic average of a few games. One was World of Warcraft, the one within doesn't have a score yet. These damn live service games. Another one was Concord. And it was. I was on drugs i guess when i made my guess uh i guess vitz guessed it we get a 69 i guess we get an 80 we're gonna guess that we get a 71 at the time of recording concord has an open critic average of 65 Oish. i feel really sorry for this game because people are just being jerks about it online and i'm just like yeah. man imagine being a dev on concord and like seeing the shit slinging and it's just like not even like the you know the 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 anti DEI crowd or whatever just like mm-hmm. fucking journalists like tracking the fucking play account hour by hour yeah Paul Tassie has not done great work this week he's done himself <laughs> a lot of mutes put it that way it's like I <laughs> muted him I was like I'm not doing this we're not going through this I'm sick of like giving people access to the play concurrent play accounts was a mistake mm. um, if you're enjoying the game then more power to you I hope there's a community of like minded souls for you to, to play this game if with you think and- and if you think you might enjoy the game and you have the money to, to buy the game, like, fucking ignore people like Tassie who are like, oh, the game's only got 100 players. And just fucking get the game mm-hmm. and and play it if you want to. Like, oh, I could talk. I could do a whole topic on it. Um, we also tried to guess the open critic average of Star Wars Outlaws, which we talked about earlier in the podcast. Moody guessed it would get an 81. Vitz guessed it would get an 83. I guessed it would get a 79. At the time of recording, Star Wars Outlaws has an open critic average of 77, which means I get the point. Putting the scores at Amy, 21. Moody, 34. (laughs) Vitz, 16. And five draws. This week, we've got a few games to guess. Four. Ooh. Um, according to the terminal, the yeah, Evolve Terminals release calendar. I found a release calendar <laughs> that tracks all games. It's great. Yes. Um, it was originally five, but I've took out the Age of Empires and uh, Mythology okay, one because it has a score, yes. I didn't. It didn't when I when we started. Um, yeah, so this week we're going to guess the open critic average first off of the casting of Frank Stone, uh, which is made by Supermassive Games. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a Dead by Daylight spin-off. <laughs> yep. It's all until things. dawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, well, oh, they're all until dawn. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, casting of Frank Stone, Supermassive Game, 76. I'm going to go with that. 76. 79. Uh, 75, please. I'd see if I can get Moody to stream at some point because we we've had we've had good fun doing those. <laughs> yeah, we have. Yeah, I don't know if I can do until dawn now with the price they've put the fucker out for. That's so. Is this for the remake? Yeah. Bullshit, man. Full on seventy. Yeah, it's I was the like, full Jesus. price. It's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Thankfully, like... the PS4 version still works, right? 
It yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I can yeah, we could just play as a PS4. Yeah. PS5 version, yeah, there's no doubt about we'll it. We'll just it. tell it's everyone it's the remake. No one's going to know the difference. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, definitely the remake. What I don't know what you're say, talking oh, about. Oh, Hayden Panitaire's got more teeth in this one. No, it's going to be the same. <laughs> there's, not, there's not as many puddles. There, there should be more exactly. puddles. <laughs> uh, we're also I guess the open credit garbage of Star Trucker. Uh, which was a fun game. I played a demo of it at Steam Next Fest. It was mm. very chill, apart from when, my, when I sprung a leak. Uh, yeah, that was less chill. <laughs> had to go outside and fix them before I died. Um, but yeah, I know Star Trek, uh, I'm going to go with, fuck it, 76. <laughs> Same again. Mr. Moody. 83. Nice. Uh, let's go in the middle, 80. And uh, now, now, I am Astrobot. It's time to guess the open I critic average of Astrobot. Astrobot. It's just called Astrobot. I thought it, had a, it would have had a different name, no, but I guess the like first game. I guess the first game wasn't called Astrobot. It had a subtitle: no. it's Astrobot Rescue Mission. Rescue Mission. Mm. Um, this is a reboot, yeah. I'm gonna guess ninety-two. <laughs> Idiot. Never fails. I'm like Agent Coulson in Agents of Shield. <laughs> it's, it's a magical place. Yeah. <laughs> Someone says eight eight. I have to say it never fails. <laughs> uh right. I think this game has the juice behind it. Oh Is crap! It, Every time you say this, Vince, <laughs> it'll be a seventy. The critics, the critics, slam it. <laughs> No, it's Astrobot. Through... Everybody loves Astrobot. Uh, and it's going to get a... I think it's going to get 90. I'm not sure it's it's getting the dizzy heights of 92 <laughs> over. Easy win for me, that one. Jesus. Yeah, we'll see. It's um... not getting the 90s. Not getting the 90s at all. Well, not... we'll find out next week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it just that is uh, actually one time I've had it. so... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'll be getting that hopefully on Friday. Nice. Um, 91. <laughs> so no one wins a fight whatsoever. <laughs> no one would a point on 89. Uh, um, mm, I know that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's definitely a draw. I, 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 I feel it in my bones. It's going to be a draw. I think it'll uh, be 80 or lower. I think it'll be uh, the last game. The we're going to guess the open critic for Warhammer 40,000 Space Ma Spice Marine 2. Spice Marine. God, I Apparently love Henry Cavill loves this. <laughs> it's gotten some, some decent positive um, previews, and like it really meant like it really gives me hope that the game will be good because I remember we talked about this. It was either the last fantasy critic draft or the one before it where I was like, "Hey, there's some people in, involved in this game dev that like know what they're doing." Um, eight, Sorry. one. 80. Six. Holy crap. Damn. Damn. Spice Marine. So, I, I uh, don't know anything about War, uh, Warhammer for, uh, for 40k even, if I can get my words out. Uh, I believe Rahul Kohli and or Henry Cavill might be involved in this one. Uh, I'm sure. I am going to go with an 84, please. Damn. I thought mine was high. I thought I was taking the high ground there. No, I remember when when you picked a Warhammer game, I think a couple of years ago, and it got like, <laughs> I think 88 or something. Like, it got a high number. Yeah, I no, like, I remember that. And I've just seen the trailer of this, so I was thinking, that fucking trailer looks awesome. The, <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah, I'm going high here. I remember <laughs> that. No, it was because uh, everybody took the piss out of me. It was total. Yeah, I, yeah. I took Total War by three. And because like there'd been like three Warhammer games before that, and every single one of them had like got negative points for whoever had picked them, and then yeah. I drafted Total Warhammer three because it's the Total War Warhammer game. It's like, and the last two were amazing, and everybody was like, "You picked the Warhammer game? Oh, you you don't want any points then?" And I was just like, "You'll see." No, it's you'll Total see. War. You you're missing all. You'll, yeah. you'll all see. <laughs> and then it got like eighty six <laughs> or something. I was like, "I fucking don't you, you'll see." <laughs> I don't know if that was the same year Russ counter picked Half Life, Alex. Like a fucking lunatic. I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> Buried himself. Yeah, Russ just decided to commit suicide that, yeah. that year. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Yeah, cool. 
I'm, I'm actually looking forward to my play this. This might be my Dead Island 2 of the year, where it's like, it's a game that I don't know if it's going to be good or not, but I'm going to try it, and hopefully it pleasantly surprises me. But that's yeah. going to do it for this episode of the Words About Games podcast. We've got a charity stream to prepare for, and I haven't eaten since 10 sure o'clock do. this morning. So we're going to get out of here. We're just going to shout at me. <laughs> but first, he's got I'm going to shout at you? Yeah, oh, you missed the part where I said I haven't eaten since 10 o'clock this morning. <laughs> oh, well. That's your fault. You, you're an adult. If you can't look after yourself, it's not my fault. I can't look after myself. <laughs> he's projecting because he's angry about Dino Crisis. No, he used... Exactly. Well, I was really bad. I got really bad for not eating when when we were in lockdown. He used to come mm. into my stream. and the, he, would, the, he wouldn't ask how I was doing. He, wouldn't, he would just go, when was the last time he ate? And then I'd be like... Like a long time ago, and then he, he just stopped shouting time. at me. Muck bang time. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Moody, it's, it's your time to shine. Hey, what up, everybody? Today, be proud of yourself. Why, you may ask, because we are all proud of you. You know what you did today. You made it. Another day is behind you. Another week has passed. You want to know what else you are? You are special, and you deserve the absolute best. You're truly good enough because you're the you're doing great. We all believe you one step at a time, one day at a time, one dream at a time. Now stand up and jump up as high as you can and high five that sky because you made it. You you are enough. Live long and prosper. High five my light is that that yeah count. <laughs> yeah, we'll do. It's really gone. There you go. <laughs> 